604. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be added or amended? There's just going to be, um, I did not hear back from anyone regarding the Upper Pass Beer Company. Mm -hmm. So we're going to scratch that. Yeah, you should not approve that. Okay. Oh, here comes Lindley. Because you don't have, we don't have a school. I haven't heard anything from the school, so I don't think you should Is it a school it. function? Or? No, it's not a school function. It's a, um, it's a soccer function. Okay. So it looks like a big um, soccer thing was going on. Hi, Lindley. And um, it... So I had asked them, the Upper Pass Beer Company gentleman, and he said he had his event coordinator call, and she spoke to Pam when I was out, and she said, yeah, this isn't us, this is some gentleman. She gave me the name, and she said she hadn't heard anything, and they were gonna do it again in August, so if they couldn't do it, she was fine okay. with it, but I never heard anything from the school, right. so. So we were just saying, Lindley, that we are going to remove the, um, the special event um, application because um, they hadn't reached back out to us. Yeah. So, so Lindley's here via Zoom. Yeah, Lindley's here. Yeah, so it wasn't going to happen because of the school, of, because it's on school property. It was a little weird anyways, but so. Okay, anything else that needs to be added or amended? I'm good. No, I'm good. Okay, anything, Lindley, on your end? Are you good? I'm good. Okay. All right, just need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. All right, don't need an all in favor because we are just three of us, so. Four of us, sorry, Lindley. I forgot <laughs> you're on the. Um, let's see, first we have six o'clock appointment. So we have shooting range. That's see right. two gentlemen in here to discuss that. That's right, so Dave and Skip, do you want me to turn you around so you can see? <laughs> Lindley's like, whatever. <laughs> So I don't know how well you can see Lindley, but we'll turn you around. So Dave and Skip have been the gentlemen who have been lovingly caring for the shooting range since Dick Adams retired. And um, they, we had some, I met with them and they had some ideas about changing some rules. And then you guys were going Friday, I think, to the Heartland. Mm -hmm. And they were going to see, come up with what they had for ideas. So they have the same list that you have in your packet. So um, I told them the select board, this was tentative. We'd see if you had any other additions mm -hmm. or changes. But how was Heartland? Heartland was very informative. Uh, the only reason that they closed down the fund December 1st, and the They obviously have a lot more real estate down there than we do. I mean, their their pit's pretty large down there, and it's shared by yeah. uh, two or three towns own a piece of that somehow. There's mm -hmm. there's no, multiple it's functions. Owned, and it's owned and run by the state. Is it the state now? Okay, because it used to be like town of Heartland owned portion of it, and, yeah. and they, the lumber they, mill and something else. Yeah. They have a person that stays there all the time. It's open. Wow. wow. So they have an on-duty person, they have certain hours, and there's somebody yeah. on-site as a supervisor? Yeah. Huh. Oh, no kidding. How did they, do they run like um, like a membership or a permitting fee or something through no, the town? No, but they do ask that anybody signs in, and before they even get the shoot, that they step outside the fence and read all of the rules. They've got a humongous sign outside the you know, the gentleman makes a before they even bring the guns in. We make sure that they read all the rules. Yeah. And he said that was, that's run by the state now, he said? Yeah. 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 The one requirement they asked is Everybody has to have either a hunting 
or a fishing license, you know, from the state. Mm -hmm. But do they have to take like a hunter safety course? Yeah, they have to do all that. Yeah. But, but for a fishing license, they don't. Right. So, that's funny that they want them to have a fishing license if they're shooting a gun. Yeah. I don't care if they can cast. Well, it's catch, the state. They just want to make sure they trout. have got the money for it. I want to make sure they can shoot well, a gun. Well, you that shotgun fishing tournament. Yeah. You know, <laughs> up in Burlington. Yeah. They get a lot of shooters from New Hampshire because they went on the Yeah. Ah, oh, sure. Now, what about in the scenario of, I mean, I'm just thinking of myself and my daughter, so... What about the scenario of, you know, a parent wanting to take their child out to to target practice but hasn't gone through the hunter safety yet? Because obviously, usually, you know, that's one of the first. That's this ruled right here. So it's saying okay. children 16 years or younger must be accompanied okay. by an adult who is gotcha. successful. Okay, so you don't have to be. It, no. It's that, way to, it's that way down here, too. Okay. The one thing is, you know, like on uh, Paul, the very first one that says you need to have a hunter safety card. But hunter safety is anybody born before, you know, 50 was grandfathered in. So oh. They don't, they don't have a hunter safety card. Mm -hmm. Like that. And then obviously anybody that has an existing license had a hunter safety permit, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. to get one, you have to get the other. So. so so, we could change this to say they have to submit proof of a current hunting license. Yeah. Well, well yeah. You or hunters. Or hunter safety. Yeah, okay. one or the other or, probably. Yeah. All right. Or current uh, state of Vermont hunting license. Then it maybe you just want to tag bullet, that yeah, bullet gonna, point with the children, just kind of yeah, add that in there as an exclaimer there. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, yep, that but that's know. a good point. So what did you guys, we were taught, we went back and forth about the, about closing the shooting range. Um, we had talked about in the winter. So what we had, I think I had this right. We're talking about closing it from January 1st to March 31st. How do you do, how do you feel about that? Do you uh, still feel? I don't think should. We shouldn't close it? I look it down as far as what we get for donations. Yeah. In January, we get $26 for a gift. Yeah. February, oh, just $5, but then February was off the cold. It was. Now, we have somebody in town that's a good Samaritan and took a snowboarder down there and blew out to the targets. Nice. I don't know who it was or maybe, but um. they did a very good job. In March, we got $44. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. In April, we got $36. So you're thinking maybe, I know one of the things we talked about was trying to close on Sundays. You know, the people that live on yeah. top of it to give them some yeah. sort of reprieve, but. I've got to sign up right now. Yeah. Okay, our, our present rules are from the Sunday before Memorial Day to the Sunday before Labor Day. Yeah. And you're closed. Yeah. Okay. Now, from from September to the, 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 the middle of, of November is when everybody wants to say in the hot Yep. Yeah. Okay. It should be open on, on Sunday for, for those that are unfortunate to have to work, work six days a week. Yep. Yeah. But after, after, after the 15th of November, there's no reason why. No, you still got to be sighted in muzzle holes. Yeah. And the end of the end of November until the first weekend of oh, yeah. December. Okay. So if you basically if you close maybe from so December twentieth. Yeah. To the Sunday before Memorial Day. 
You could close on Sundays those days. Can that close right straight through until, until it's September the Sunday uh, until before, the, before, <coughs> before, before the, have it just open on Sunday from the, the first Sunday in September? The Sunday before Memorial Day to the Sunday before Labor Day. No, that's when it's closed. Okay, that's when you want it to be closed. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sunday after Labor Day. Right yeah. 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 27th of the 9th. 27th of September 9th. So just have it open from the first Sunday of September until the 20th of December. Of December. Okay. I'm just trying to write it down. Have it open on, have open. On the Sunday after Labor Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not oh. the first Sunday. Okay, Sunday after Labor Day. Yeah, okay. All right, to the 20th to have it open. And then, so base, but you're saying now just leave it open basically year round except for those days. No. Yeah. Have it closed except for those days. Have it open on Sunday for just 14 weeks. Yep, yeah. yeah. right. And then be closed the other Sundays. The other Sundays, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. yep, that I get. And then, but what? I, but then, um, but the January through March, we would have open. Open Monday through Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But no Sunday. Okay. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So, all right, that makes sense. And then we had talked about hours on Sundays. As you can see on there, 11:30 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. I don't know if that's still. That would be. That would be perfect because. After 4.30, it gets dark at that time. And All right. And the other days during the week, Monday through Saturday, you're saying 9 a.m. to 7. Um, and then from April 1st to September 15th, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you're happy with the hours. Okay. Are the neighbors happy with those hours? No. Seven, of course <laughs> No. <laughs> so, well... It's okay. tough because they all bought when the pit was there, when it was still shooting range. So, but yeah, no, I'm sure they're not. I think they would like to see it closed. Um, I'm sure they would love it to be closed, yeah, or at least every Sunday, or I'm sure they would. But it's the other thing is it's hard to enforce because it's well, just volunteers. We'll have a little discussion about that when we get to it. Yeah, it's volunteers, so it's a trick. you officially made a shooting range. People yeah. will go in there all the time, day and night, and shoot them. Yeah. See, I think that's what we have to have a little discussion about. I mean, we've had a discussion in the past about it. Well, I think we need to talk about it. The enforcement piece or the hours well, piece? Well, just the enforcement and, and the fact that it's always been, you know, there, and Dick volunteered, and you guys have volunteered, but you really, you know, they have no enforcement um, abilities. Right. You're not town employees. You're not the town is not well, is not back. It, it's not a town function like the rec field or yeah, um, right you know something did like that. Did, 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 did you come up with the insurance, Teresa? I did. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Like I asked you way back the first time we met down here about making him an employee. We're going to. Yep, I talked to Dave. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make Dave an employee and pay him a stipend per year, like well, a small amount. That way, he, that way he has that insurance. Room, make it a, a that way he, real thing. yeah, it's, then he has insurance coverage. Because it's always been just, you know, kind of the good old boys, you know, everybody mm -hmm. taking care of each other and cooperating and everything. Well, and, you know, um, well, I, I would, 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 would like to see the folks as a state if anybody violates the rules down there at the shooting range, that they receive a letter telling them that they are no longer welcome to use the pit, and if they do, they are subject to being ticketed for 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 criminal trespass. Well, that's actually one of the reasons I had Justin put you guys on first is because I think what we can do is that 
because if, if it's stated in the rules, I think the what we could do is if we make them sign in and we had a name and address, I think that I could have one of the constables or the VSP or somebody serve them with an order of no trespass. But I think they have the right to go to court, right, to fight the order of no trespass because there's no ticket involved with it. It's just an order. Right. So an order of no trespass actually can be served by any person for any reason at any time. Oh, so good. As long as the town owns this property, which we're going to kind of take the lesson. Yeah. Uh, the town select board can go and say, yep, this person's trespassed on this property. Issue the trespass. There's nothing they can do about their trespass on that property for two years. Oh, two years. Oh, there we go. That's trespass what. Trespass is valid for two years. At which time you can either reevaluate and allow them to come back after their punishment, uh -huh. or just enforce it again, have us reserve them again after two years. So, what happens if, um, you know, if, if someone gets an order on trespass and they violate it, then we you call the police, and then what happens? It's a, it's a arrestable misdemeanor. It's there from, so misdemeanor. Yes, yeah, so they'd be arrested for misdemeanor offense. Um, if they do it a second time, it can be viewed as a continuance, which could be led to a felony. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that you can give. I think that I can because I'm town manager. I have to double check the statute. I think I can issue the order of no trespass. Like I think I can. I'm not that I'm going to go serve it because well, I am I, not. I think but I think that I can do. I can have law someone law. serve it. I can sign the paperwork. Yeah, yeah. yeah it makes sense because there's no. And, you know, and, and Dick yeah. went down and was. Oh, I know. How he but, how he yeah, didn't yeah. get his but, you know, trouble. Hey, me. If you're the employee, yeah. of responsible. You, you be there at all times. I and mean, how do you know you go down? Do you just hear well, you hear gunshots and you, and you go? Or I go down every every once in a while, and I go down every time somebody is shot. Right. Shoot. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. But I think what he's saying is he he'd like some abilities that you know if he is down there supervisor or pops yeah. in and sees someone that is doing something egregious right. then then we have some sort of weight to say you know yeah. we're no longer going to offer the service to you and, and I think that's can, true I think that or, we you know, could do a sign too that says if you you know if you violate the rules you will be issued an order of no trespass right. and explain that because then all that Dave or Skip has to do is call the office and tell me who it is and I can go mm -hmm. from there so that would be good. That's the other thing too, is when having, um, when Justin and Oscar are on, having them stop. And even if someone's shooting, just say, hey, you know, I think it's always nice to have a police presence. So someone, and, you know, just to stop. And, and I think I, you know, I agree with Paul where, because, you know, this service is a good Samaritan type service that, you know, if we do see somebody doing something egregious, you know, the penalty should be higher, right? I mean, if you had, if if you were down there every second of the day and you saw somebody do something and you said, "Hey, geez, you shouldn't do it this way," you know, or gave them a warning, that's one thing. But where we're actually allowing everybody to use it under their own supervision, and they do something egregious, and then the penalty probably should be higher, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. I mean that's not really. Yeah, no, you're on the honor system, and if they can't, if we can't trust you to use it, then I, I think that, I'm sure people are going to be upset to go from, hey, I got reported to, doing something wrong, but you know, in the end, we, you know, we'll be. It, and, and, Dave's and, word to be right. taken. And I got to think that for some, for Dave to send it to you to send yeah. it to somebody else means that, probably Dave had a discussion with the guy last week and he went and did it again, and now he's like, this yeah. person or whatever. Person shouldn't be here anymore, and you know, I'm sure he's not going to be down here wanting to to sign everybody up. No, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, but he yeah. needs to have a little bit of power that, of, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, you know, kind of structure it a little more, formalize it a little more, and with signage. Well, with signage and having, you know, Dave as a with some enforcement ability. Yeah. As opposed to just. Be in there and say, "Hey, you're not supposed to do that." Somebody would say, "Yeah, well, no." Yeah. Right. You know, I asked Dick in all the years. He said he only had like one run-in with somebody, and that yeah. was it. Yeah. He just said, for the most part, and people have been pretty respectful so far for you, Dave and Skip. People been. And you, what? Do you know most of the people? Yeah. I kind of wonder. Well, just. Well, we do have a couple of guys that come up from Lebanon. We have guys that come down from Essex, Georgia. Mm -hmm. We have guys come over from Rome. Wow. That's wild, huh? They're like the Rome, who's one of the ones that donated money to Isn't that nice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, uh, 
the jewelry jewelry will be less than ten dollars. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice, because well, they police their own brass and they take it and you know they buy signs and materials. They've kind of used the, right. what's there to fund it and well, take, uh, clean up the trash. I would just make sure nice. that we make sure that we have all the appropriate signage yep. to allow us to issue the orders or clearly yeah. clearly uh, make the offense known to the individual if we do. I would assume the insurance company would want to have certain signage. They didn't put on a single caveat. No. I will. Is there any additional they're from signage? Texas, Paul. They're from Texas. Is there any additional <laughs> signage that we don't currently have there that you think that we need to include to be able yeah, to? Yeah. Did you see anything this, in Heartland that was jumped out at you? Their sign is just about the same thing. Oh, Pretty similar. Sweet. Off, offhand, I think Dick went down there and copied theirs. He probably did. <laughs> That's right. Good yeah. thinking. Yeah. Now, do you still want to do the uh, enrollment card like? Well, what do you think? I mean, what we had kind of said was uh, shooters are required to have submitted proof of successful completion of hunter safety or, you know, have a proof of state of Vermont license. And we're saying, well, I could put a form on the website or they can mail or drop off a copy. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't really sure about, I was, I, I guess, I don't know, do you, should we issue a card or could we just keep a running list of who's paid and provide you with the list? What would work better for you all? Because I'm. You could probably do a, card, a list and then we could just post it over there. Okay. You know, That's a great maybe idea. Maybe update it two, three times a year. Or yeah, well, as soon as, yeah, people in the beginning we might have, we'll do it more. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'll do that. I'll have Kelly, we'll do that. Sorry, because I hadn't done it yet because I wasn't sure. So I think the form will just be their name and address and we'll put on it the rules. If you yeah. violate the rules, you will receive an order from a trespass. You will yeah. violate the rules here. Of course, that's probably going to become the biggest topic you know, for the next year or whatever. Yeah, we'll be yeah, won't get getting people to, to sign up, right? Because probably the the biggest offense is going to be going in, checking in. Hey, have you, you know, have you submitted the proper proof to the town yeah. office? No, I haven't. You know, or I didn't know. You know, yeah. So you'll be chasing that for the next year or two. You know. Well, what we'll do is, well, I mean, there can be forms for them there mm -hmm. to drop them off. There can be, you know, do you? You don't have a sign in now, do you? No. We talked about putting a clipboard up with a piece of plastic over it with yeah, a, a sign. A lock in. box or something you can drop. Well, in. with us, the he has a lock box, so they could drop their forms there, but also have a sign in sheet so maybe sometimes if you go down and you see something has been destroyed obviously that person probably didn't sign in but maybe the person before them yeah. or after them saw someone coming or going a sign -in so sheet i can do a sign-in sheet for you the date time anyway. name contact number or something just, don't put out anything there we don't want to lose it's, it's an unguarded area yeah oh for the sign-up yeah, sheet, sign -up sheet and so it would just be their name and the date and the yeah. time they were there the only other comment I had was on the following actions are prohibited. You got cigarettes, pipes, drugs, and alcohol. So if I go in there with a cigar, that's okay. <laughs> okay. So maybe you want to put tobacco or products okay. or e-cigarettes or, e or vaping. I don't so know how, dete how detailed we want to get with that. Kind of yeah. That's probably just for the cleanup. Yeah. <laughs> You're right for the cleanup. You're probably right, but I could put tobacco products. Yeah. Right now, there isn't any anybody that is smoking that. Um, they're not putting their their butts out on the. Good. So you just Good. leave yeah, that to the clean. piece that says yeah. the, the use of drugs or alcohol, right? As far as the drugs and the alcohol. That's back at the other park. Across the street? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You know, I went down there one day and it was just doing one second here shooting away and he had a 20 ounce can of hard tea. And I just reached it out there. <laughs> Good for you. Yes. 
So I can update this and then I can add the information on this about the um, order of no trespass and have um, the select board approve all that. It'd be nice to have it. Yeah. Yep. Supposed to start with a BB gun and then a 22. Yes, <laughs> there's a progression to this. <laughs> wow. But it's not even. I mean, an oh, AR isn't crazy. even that aggressive of a rifle either. So I mean, crazy. somebody that's having that kind of control issues. <laughs> but so we're gonna make the change to some of the hours of operations. Yep. Uh, a couple of the range rules um, tweaks on it. Yep, and we'll add. And then the add in the order of no trespass information. Um, yep. And then, um, and then we'll have that to approve at the next meeting, or yep. So we need. Do you have, do you have uh, litter? All trash must be taken care of. So yeah, all trash targets. That would cover cigarette butts. If you were yeah, it's kind of like a trash in, trash out mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other than you know, you can leave your brass in, right. in the bucket. Oh, we have trash bucket. Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, rapid, rapid fire on the semi-automatic firearms. Uh, but you, can you single fire those AR-15s? Yeah. No, you, you you have to pull the trigger each time to shoot. You know, right. it's just that's what you pull the trigger back and hold it. That's a semi-automatic. That's a semi auto. Yeah. No, I have a full automatic. You need a federal permit for that. Okay. A bump stock, and that is totally illegal. Do you have any questions, Lindley? Okay, well, I'll get those changes made, and, um, and I'll get the, a form together for people to submit, you know, their proof that they've either have a current hunting license or have taken hunter safety. And then we'll talk to Kelly about getting a list. And she has one of your email addresses, I think. So we can always just email it to you as we change, as it gets updated. And um, I'll give you, so I'll get you some extras so that you can post them down there if you want to. And um, I mean, not that you need to post it on here, but you could put in there that, you know, that all persons must obey all state and federal guidelines you know yeah. I know we don't have it on any of this but yeah you can just put that in there <coughs> of 
course, if they're not on that, that's a bigger issue. And <laughs> they're going to wish that they had just a no trespass order. That's right. But. Yeah, at the moment, we have 388 dollars that we're taking in from the donations and the sale of grass. Oh, good. <clears throat> For heaven's sakes. So I don't know how safe a camera would be to put down there. Yeah, yeah. probably not. We need that to buy plywood for the, for the backboard. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they're using. Yeah. They're using. If you buy it right now, you do. <laughs> they're. Yeah, they're actually using something else now, like what oh, Randolph right. uses, yeah. um, Fish and Game, because it's cheaper. But you also had improvements you wanted to make to the bench, and maybe buy some signage. So. Yeah. Or we will, or whatever. So, but now, um, down there in Hartland, they use a separate bench to shoot shoot pistol. I mean, you can you don't need to get enough room for two. Just what's it going to be? It's something to it. That's something you could explore, if you, perhaps. I mean, I, yeah. uh, one thing about down there at Arthur, they have targets at for the, like the handguns at ten feet or at ten yards and twenty-five yards. Where ours is a twenty-five yard, and being down here, we see casings, you know, like pop out of a twenty-two semi hollow. They're they're shooting closer than what that bench is. They're going up to 10, 15 yards, whatever. So, could we put up another target at 10 yards? I don't, that's up to you. I don't see why not. I mean, if you feel like you have the right distance for a shooting lane and the distance you yeah, want, it, it, would, the you know, it, it would block the 25 yard line. Yeah. Yeah. It's up to the select board. I don't. Well, I think if it's if you've got enough room to do it, I mean, if if it, if it crams space too small, there's potential for a problem. No, it wouldn't be too small. We could go like in between them, you know, so the berm is still behind it, you know. Yeah. But theoretically, you could have, you know, I guess two benches there if, if only one person's allowed to be active on the range anyways, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah. it really doesn't theoretically matter if they're using this bench or the one closer. They just, you know, both obviously can't be active at the same time. But it might be smarter, less, if you just do the target and not the second bench, just so you alleviate any issues. Well, I think that's why, you know, you know, these yeah. gentlemen here yeah. have taken upon themselves and if they feel that yeah. they can make that work safely and then I yeah. I don't know about Lindley or anybody else on the board, but I would yeah. be fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a safety question. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. I mean you're you're just as much, if not more, qualified to make that decision than we are. So <laughs> Yeah, and plus, you're going to be the ones building it. So I guess that's the other thing, too, is, right, what do you want to build, the Zade or the Target? Yeah. Yeah. Just build it out of plastic or something that's cheaper than wood. Yeah. <laughs> We're using them kelp mats. The kelp mats? Oh, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And, and we put wood in, you know, he put third. Go there and just change it this way. Good. That's amazing. Yeah. So the cow mat instead of plywood. It's a lot cheaper too, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's forty-three dollars versus versus fifty or sixty dollars. Seventy plus. Seventy yeah. plus. Yeah, yeah he's right. Hundred bucks. Yeah. You can get um, five 
back more. Oh, back oh, more. oh nice. Oh, yes. well, that makes sense. Oh, good for you. You well, guys, we, so we clever. appreciate you guys. Yeah. You know. Now, one more thing, just out of left field. Say you was to designate that a remote, you know, a Bethel recreation area. Yep. Could you combine the insurance for the recreation area with the swimming pool list and get it cheaper? No, because it's already, no, that was the insurance company who doesn't want to cover us. VLCT passive isn't the same as like a mutual, or isn't the same as like a progressive. They're different, it's, a, it's more of a fund based on loss and what the record is. So they really try to work hard to reduce what their liability would be. So they are, they don't want to touch us. So that's why I worked with them to find another broker. So we ended up getting the premium for 1300, which frankly I thought was a deal because they were thinking at least five. And, but then, and the one we originally were denied our first application and they had some caveats of why they denied us. We assumed if we got denied a second time, we'd have a list of things to address. But the second place we applied, we didn't get denied and they had no, no caveats on it and we kind of laughed. I, then I realized, I was like, oh, they're from Texas. They don't care. They're all pro-gun. So yeah. they, they didn't, but no, because it's the same group, VLCT passive, they, they did not want us to stay insured with them. Yeah. But it's a good thought. <laughs> there, there are certain activities even on the rec center that I'm sure are categorized as high risk and you're paying a rider. A yeah, diving true. board, a Skate rope course, yeah. uh, well, even, you know, those kinds of things. Even swing sets and things like yeah. that are mm -hmm. higher risk nowadays. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Horseback riding is high I risk. Think so. Well, we thank you, gentlemen. Uh, and Therese will. It, it, I'll get this typed up. Get and, typed up and, and just have them redo it again done. and then just get to us at the next meeting. We'll sign off on it. The rules, the rules are the application. The rules, yeah. Did you guys, I was trying to remember what your sign was. Did you have it done at, um, down at Spalding Press or something? Was it on something more than just laminated or was it, I couldn't remember. No, I think it's just Okay, yeah, once we, once the slug board agrees to it, yeah, I'll send it to um, Spalding Press and get it done up big yeah. and have it laminated and get it to you. So it'll be two weeks now. They meet again and they'll do it in two weeks. We'll get the language parsed out. But I'll have you look at it before I do it so you tell me if it's right. <clears throat> All right, thank All you, right, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Have a good evening. Yeah. Oh. Does somebody have a permit to shoot firecrack or uh, fireworks the last three nights up on up on up on Crusher Hill? No. Yeah, the only no, the only t on one that we ever approved, the fire chief approves the one for the big fireworks down here once a year. What's the rule about fireworks? Uh, Is it very? That's right. It's been a very hot topic. They pull permits, they reinstate them. Yeah. Uh, the general rule of thumb is that kind of the states live in the towns, and most towns have delegated that power to the fire warden and said, if you want to issue a permit by the fire warden, you need to have approval from either the select chair or you know, the fire warden directly. And usually those two converse with each other sign off on the permit. Yeah. And most of our towns will do it, and we're getting complaints left and right, even now. Like, yeah. Yeah. About two weeks from now, you'll be in the clear. My wife is complaining because she gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning and these guys are shooting on at midnight. Well, she can call the police because there is a noise in the nighttime, a state statute. So tell her she can call 911. And, and it is, a, we don't have a noise ordinance in Bethel, but the state of Vermont does. So if they were still letting them off pretty heavy at 11, 12 o'clock, probably the police would go up and tell them to knock it off. <laughs> oh no. Oh, funny. Okay.
All right. <laughs> so meet and greet with Justin. This is Justin. <laughs> Lindley has met, let, met Justin before. She was part of the interview panel, which was myself and Tim Mills, Lindley Brainerd, Paul Feeney. And then of course it has been crazy and COVID. And so it's been nuts to try to work out um, a schedule about the Justin. Um, luckily he had took the day off so he could come in and meet you. <laughs> so, uh, which is good. And um, he lives in Brandon, he lived near Oscar, right? I live about five minutes from Oscar. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we're pretty close. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I thought. So you have been doing a couple, what, Friday, Saturday night? What have you been doing? Yeah, so uh, the recent past, we've been doing Friday, Saturday nights, Friday nights in Clover. Uh, it's with a lot of traffic and a lot of call volume coming out of the state police. They're happy to hand off. Uh, so I've been trying to come over and help those nights. Uh, that's the reason I was able to have three little kids under five uh, the majority of the time. So I can only come over a couple nights a week usually. Uh, you know, I'm estimating about 10 hours a week is for I'm able to stay. Uh, now that I'll obviously the last for the rest of the hours that are available. Some weeks will be more, some weeks will be less, just depends on the week. Uh, I do know that I've had a lot of complaints, it seems like recently, for animals. For some reason, Sundays keep coming in. I got one that I next came this morning, so I've got to do that after here. Um, so I'll probably be doing a few Sundays here and there as well. Um, right now, I do not have my kids Friday nights, Saturday nights, or Sunday nights. So that kind of works for me for one of those three nights, two of those three nights, sometimes all three, just depending on the week. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what seems to work on my schedule, but it also seems to be what kind of works over here. Those nights seem to be a little bit busier. Everybody's off from work on you know, Friday, Saturday nights, have a few drinks. Oscar had a pretty wild DUI the other night. He it's, did. It's pretty yeah. Pretty much destroyed inside of his car, so we've got a cage now for that one. They'll be going in the next couple weeks. Was that, <laughs> was that in, in town? Yeah, I guess it was somewhere here in town. I, I haven't got mm. all the particulars on it. Just the, he picked him up. It was Royal. It was a Royalton. He was on duty for Royalton. Oh. So, it, yeah, because he was doing a D, he was on for Royalton and he was getting ready to head back to the office in Royalton because he was on duty for them. And he picked him up in Royalton, so it was his Royalton cruiser. Yeah. But he, yeah. Um, yeah, it turned out to be some wild ride. I, he didn't, he was been up being out all night because it's just a whole process. Right, and, right, um, right. but is your shift like seven to one? Is that what you do if you do Friday, Saturday, 7 p.m. to like 1 a.m., 7 to midnight? Yeah. Yeah, so I normally work at, so I work sometimes at Rolling Cash. Yeah. Um, my schedule there is usually eight to five, nine to five, sometimes a little later. Um, so that I like get done at Rolling, get back home, change the uniform, grab some eat, get back and go over here, it's about 6.37 o'clock, that's the end of the I usually work until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, just depending on how busy it is. If it's busy, I'll stand until 2, because that's when most of the back of the agency, state police, sports guy, all that, are usually gone by 2 a.m. So then I'm literally by myself, which is yeah. a good situation in today's world. No. Uh, so usually by 2 o'clock, I'm wrapping up. Uh, sometimes 1 o'clock, just depending on how busy it is. And how busy or how many officer state actually has on. Yeah. And, and I know in our area, <clears throat> you know, some history of constable work in. Um, in Bethel, anyways, is you know the Bethel, um, the Bethel residents have made it very clear over you know the decade and a half that I've been here that you know they don't want a police department, um, a full-time police department. That we want um, a, a member of society that can be engaged um, both lawfully and you know on a personal level in the community. So. Um, you know, things like, you know, we, we have certain events during the year that would be nice to have a presence to, like we have Ford Festival in the fall, and there are other events that do pop up, which is always nice to have a, you know, a face, uh, you know, not really, you know, I mean, you're on duty, but it's more kind of a, a friendly gathering, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, we try to partner with the school as much as we can in the past. I mean, we've had some constables in the past that have lived in the town so that they maybe took a little more time, you know, went to the basketball games and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's always nice to, if we can partner with the schools at all on, you know, whatever it might be, if there's an event or um, a large event or something like that. Um, and then probably the one that has, the two things that have impacted our community the most over the last few years anyways, um, is, you know, and I won't just say it's tourists, but speed in the village area. Um, you know, we like to blame it on the out of stairs, but it's not always the out of stairs. So, um, especially, you know, the stretch from 
um, you know, the Sand Hill, Church Street, Pleasant Street yep. intersection back down towards the fire department. So that speed transition, school, you know, that whole thing is usually where we get a lot of like um, 65 and a 25. Yeah. There is a speed cart out there too that um, Royalton PD let us use. I know Oscar was trying to get a solar thing for it, whether he did or not. I didn't notice when I went by there's today. Speed, so he's there's a speed cart on out Church here. Street, yep. which he just put out, but I don't know. He didn't have power to it. Yeah, I was going to say, the one that was out there worked a little bit on Monday and then not at all for the rest of the week. Yeah, Huck, well, he was uh, trying to get a uh, work get a solar yeah. attachment for it and um, so I said to him just knock on the neighbor's door they'd probably let you run an extension cord didn't, so didn't we get I'll approval to, to buy some new speed those signs? we will in July oh, gotcha. but but this is an actual portable that he I'll let get you, Lenny. Hold that on. he let Oscar or that Loretta let us borrow so I'll ask Oscar um, the status of the solar yeah. panel and um, or I said just go knock on the neighbor's door they'll look at it so I mean, speed. You know, I mean, I guess typically in the village areas, is um, been very concerning um, over the years. You know, most of it seems to be on this side of the village. Um, and then, you know, and one thing I will say that Oscar did a really phenomenal job with is tr cracking down on some of the drug distribution things in town. And it might not be directly, but it's more moving it. You know. But, you know, I don't think we solved those problems, but we moved them. Um, but, you know, he did a really good job of some of the hot button areas, and I'm sure he could tell you, or you know where they're at already, of monitoring those. The great thing about, you know, some of the shifts that you're on right now is you're going to be able to drop in on some of those times that weren't dropped in before, um, where some of that activity goes on. So, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure we all know that some of the hot button places that mm -hmm. that happens. Yeah. Um, Lenny, you want to add something? Yeah, when it comes to speed, I haven't worked with the Bethel office. Yeah. The things I've seen, <laughs> I've seen speeding up and down on that turn. My question is, is there a place there for one of those um, speed gauge signs? Oh, I see. Um, well, I don't know. No, no, I don't know what you mean. It's at the school, but by then, I mean, I've seen people whizzing up that road. Because they're going so fast. Yeah, you're right. Because we talked about putting one where it was before, which is down by Dennis Woods, where the used car yeah. dealership is. And then we have a second. So <clears throat> we were trying to put one on that end of the town <clears throat> and one on this end to slow people as they come in the village because yeah. <clears throat> we'd only budgeted money to purchase two. Right. So I think we have, I know we have a third pole, but it's on North Main, which is mm -hmm. kind of probably not a great spot for mm -hmm. one, but we don't have another one anyways. We're only going to have two, but you're not wrong because that's what some, a gentleman who lives on Church Street was saying was, you know, you need to do more on Church Street because he said, yeah, you can do that in, but they're flying coming this way yeah. or they're flying coming that way. That's so they pick up the speed and continue. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. I'll, I'll look and see. No, definitely. I mean, usually once they get basically across the bridge here, yeah. they head to the corner and then once they hit the, I mean, I live at the... I live at the corner at the far end, so mm -hmm. I can tell how fast someone's going. I can hear them coming. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's like. They have to launch themselves? Let's just put my foot down, mm -hmm. put a weight on it, and see how fast it goes. Yeah. And then just keep going. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I, I, I think with, you know, uh, like in the past, most of Oscar's time and other constables have been spent during the daytime, which. You know, helps in certain cases, not so much in others. And I think in this case, you'll probably get the, the opposite of that, where you'll be able to uh, look at some of the hot spots for, you know, drugs and things like that, as well as catch any of the late night speeders and Correct. DUI and was, type duties. But there's some of the stuff that when so the officer or prison approach position, yeah, he kind of sought me out. Uh, I had one of the highest river instructors and DUI instructors for all the sheriff's last four years. Um, so he was kind of. Knowing on that, knew that I was looking to pick up some extra hour being a single parent and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Um, so I spent a short time that I've been over here. I have picked up on some of the, the hot spots, as you say. Um, I got to do two different road house calls uh, in the short time that I've been over here. Uh, as far as the speeding is, we're saying I've sat at the, uh, I don't want to say the van building, but the empty uh, car dealer building. There. Yeah, there yeah. Two nights, and, as you said, written 65, 70 through there. Yeah. 
uh, then the next night, a few more kids in a row, I wouldn't sit in the same spot. I'd wake them down actually sit in church. Because people are used to seeing you in one spot, they go, okay, I'm going to Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if you move, just even a half mile down the road, all of a sudden, oh, he's not there, let's be back up, they can run a corner at 15. That's right. So yeah. It, it, is, it is something that I've noticed just being over here that stretch, um, as well as sometimes when they have office, they can play mm. through there. Oh, so sure. 65, 70, they do come. Down. And, and I and I think you know again what we were talking about, and it's it's more difficult with the hours that you'll be working because the majority of the townspeople are you know at home at that time or not out. Um, but it, you know it's really just having that kind of local community involvement. Um, you know, going around. You know, I, I would say any time that you, you know, if you feel comfortable and it's set, you know, because down here what now by. Nine o'clock. There's probably nothing going on in town, mm -hmm. you know, the the bar and a few things. But you know, maybe at seven o'clock when you come on duty, like you know, to to walk through the downtown or get to know some, you know, some of the business owners or because you know that and that's what really changed here is you know we had a couple of establishments that, you know, they see what's going on, right? The business owners and they don't want stuff like that being you know out there. No, there's anybody else and. And you know they used to call for years the state police, and the state police would just be like, oh, you know, "We're busy, we can't, yeah. you know, whatever." Instead, then they would just call Oscar, and Oscar would come down and deal with it, and you know mm -hmm. it would be done. So, yeah. you know, I would I would just highly suggest that, you know, maybe that first hour on duty or two, you know, spend some kind of foot traffic in the downtown area, just just getting to know the. Um, the establishments that are open at that time, like uh, Cockadoodle, uh, Cock Babe's Bar, those ones, because you know most of the time they don't want to deal with any of those people either. You know, yeah. they'll be the first one to call you and say, you know, they'd be like, Justin, hey, I got this guy at the bar, <laughs> he yeah. just needs to go. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, because they don't want to deal with that anymore, and we do, and it you know yeah. scares their customers away and sure. everything else. But yeah. um, and one of the things we should talk about for Justin is some of the good things that we found when we interviewed him was he his pretty much his designated area for Rutland is is small towns. You do Middletown Springs, right? Yeah, so, so I, really I, small. I, yeah. I really call our regional patrol section. So I cover Ira, Timothy, and Danby, Middletown Springs. Yeah. Uh, Timothy and Danby are pretty good size. They're very spread out. Uh, pretty much like here where you have your normal town section and then you have East Bethel. Yeah, so exactly. You're kind of, you're kind of spread. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I can do down there is uh, yeah, each school year, and schools put together a list of events they have coming up, send them out to me so that way I can try to manipulate my schedule into you know, make graduations or have a parade or stuff like that. And um, that's one of the things I actually talked about when I came over here about was getting a list of events that happen in town. Um, so that way he can look at, see which things he can do, and whatever he couldn't do, I can try to manipulate my schedule and manage up to sure. come through that as well. Mm -hmm. um, because in today's policing world, unfortunately, it, it is a lot about public uh, perception. Yeah, and, and we don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of events, but you know, the ones that we do have are pretty, you know, pretty important. That's when you see the majority of our citizens come out, you know. Yeah, I'll send you the date for Forward Fest and stuff, um, and, and try to do a better job keeping you in the loop. But, so that's always nice. So he has small town, you know, feeling, so he knows, he, he knows where to go to the town. Face. And then you know, so the the goal anyway is is to do about twenty patrol hours a week in Bethel. That's that's our goal. Between um, he and right. Oscar, so yeah. so does it sound like right now? So if Justin's going to be doing, you know, ten. Uh, ten or so a week, you know, two two nights maybe three nights a week for ten hours or so. That, does that mean Oscar is going to pick up? The remainder of those, like on a day shift type deal, or how, well, how's that looking right now? Well, his schedule just changed to something, something different in Royalton. I think they just went to tens yeah, shifts, tens. tens. But I actually thought he went to, f I thought he said five tens the other day. But I don't know. Yeah. I was like, what? they're the guaranteed hours. overtime. Yeah. So I think they're, but mm -hmm. so they're doing four tens. But then it rotates out because he picked up that DUI at the end of his shift. So then he's tied up all night. So then obviously he doesn't work that day, but he did come into the office. I've seen him a couple times in and out. So I'll, now that we know what Justin's gonna be able to do approximately 10 a week, then I'll, I'll talk to Oscar and see, and then you two can and I, and I think we have, I think we have ample patrol during the daytime because we always have either Windsor yeah. County is floating around or the state troopers. 
yeah. and then Oscar or Royalton or, you know, or someone PSP. from Royalton always seems to be in the area. Yeah. But I'm just trying to like, you know, continue to get that face to face <laughs> time with yeah. the school, no, the village. Yeah, and Oscar's um, the people good. on when he's available, he'll come over to he went on a school field trip one time, yeah. they invited him to go and the kids helped design the patch at the school and so that was nice. So yeah, I'll talk to Oscar okay. and see but um so the goal is still to fill the 20 it's 20, hours. yeah, it's still the goal is to fill 20. And, and we know some weeks we're not going to hit it, but right. you know, it was tough during COVID and some other stuff where mm -hmm. maybe we'd only get a few. And then Oscar changed, his shift changed recently, and so it's just been kind of a... Okay. You, you, changed, uh, you have a, a rash of surgeries. Yeah, he was sort of sicker yeah. than a dog. Yeah, he was out for a few oh, weeks, so. and that's yeah. right. So, yeah, you know, it does. But, but it's it also happens. just, it, you know, it... I think you almost, going through Bethel, majority of the time, you do come across some sort of law enforcement yeah, in town so. most of the time. It's just, it's always nice to know, so like, you know, I don't know, it'll say I have an issue and I could just call Justin because I know Justin's on at 7 o'clock, you yeah. know? Or if you know that Oscar's right. in the area because it's 10 o'clock in the morning, then yeah. you can call Oscar. And it's also you know? good because some people like so, to not or know dog the schedule, issue or so whatever you kind of never you know? know, but it's good. Yeah. And people, you do, but you do, you see BSP okay. or different things, but... But, um, but no, so that sounds great. Uh, as I told Oscar, as so many town people have heard it, if I always had to work for an omnic, it's the same one I used for years, the same one I used in the sheriff's office. So it's constantly on, it's always on me. Um, so I get calls, you know, for dog complaints, or hey, I have a question on, you know, my neighbor is doing this, or something I can do about it. But we do get those calls at home. Mm -hmm. um, so we are still handling that type of thing as well, even when I'm not directly here with it. What do you about chickens in the road? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we've heard. Oh, don't worry, that happens. Yeah, we've. Heard, I've actually got a complaint recently, and I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a whole other discussion, chicken. Lenny, of why the chicken cross the road. Chickens in the road. Yeah, we've had that issue. Someone was yeah. there on their property. I'm like, just go talk to the owner of the chicken. Yeah. No, it's just nice to yeah. kind of once we figure out a a sort of set a schedule, schedule. Yeah. Just. Because then people know yep, exactly. um, so when to expect to if there is some of those calls type deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, Justin. Because if not, we that. get the call and they'll say, you know, yeah. is is Oscar on? And you say, I, I have no know. idea. And do you have I his say. number? And I'm like, oh, I thought I did, but I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. And <laughs> we go down that whole thing. So. Yeah, I've met most of the officers that work when I should go over here for take place now. Yeah. Both the sergeants work with somebody else to work at that office. So I've got a pre record that. So if I need something or vice versa, if they're short staffed, Back and forth sure. each other. And, uh, you know, I, I do want to put the bug in your guys' ear. Uh, there is going to be a lot of changes coming forward with policing coming from the Criminal Justice Training Council uh, just to, with use of force and obviously everything that's happened in the last few years here. Uh, they're starting to roll out some new directives that's actually going to really affect the way we do the job. Uh, even, I, I believe, even currently, state police is no longer doing welfare checks oh. because of some of the new legalities that have come out. It's putting us and the departments in such a spot where legally we can. Uh, so just give me that heads up. I, I haven't been through the full training, so I want to speak any more on that, but there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of things kind of coming forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe time to you call and they're saying we're not coming out of that. Yeah. There's a reason behind it, but they may not be able to give it yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to know because, um, yeah, obviously some of our policies will need to change and that sort yeah. of thing. So It's, it's going to be a statewide rollout. In October is when they're looking to roll that out. Uh, okay. And it's to the point where they're actually talking about pulling, I think it's 130 use of force instructors that the state currently has, pulling them all in and making them recertify completely because of it. Yeah. It's just that much change. It's mm. not like a one day class. It's mm. right. you know, hours upon hours of your training. So yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's going to be coming forward with that. Yeah. So well, let's keep that back in mind. They say, oh, I haven't seen Grandma in a few days. Can we check on her? And they say, no. Yeah. There's a it. <laughs> oh well, that's interesting well, to just, know, but that'll yeah. be good to know. So I'll I'll make a note. I'll I'll write something on my calendar too for October to kind of start looking for that, because yeah, it'll affect obviously or, all of our policies too could, on use of force and stuff. Or get, or get Justin and Oscar to come in. Yeah. I think it would in be September or whatever, and if you update guys us. could come in when you can, when you have something to share, sure. uh, to let us know. Yeah. And, and we'll. I think it's good PR. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. We, Absolutely. You can say we've, we've not to mention, you know, not just policies, but it might be, you know, let's say you're starting to see something in the community that maybe needs our attention that we don't see. 
um, and how would you like, you know, direction on, you know, or resources on combating something, you know? Yeah. No, so. that's a good idea. So we'll, I'll, I'll write on my calendar so we look for it. And if you see something, just forward it to me. And because we obviously have mm -hmm. a use force policy and a whole book of other policies exactly. too that we need, we'll need to update yep. too. So yeah. excellent. So once that rolls out, obviously we have to get go through it for our normal purpose. Sure. We'll have all that training come back and say, hey, this is what needs to change. Or sure. Most likely, what I'll do is I'll pull a copy of what ours or mm -hmm. use for the sheriff's office will be. Like, mm -hmm. Look, this is what we got. We want to use this. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And the good thing is too, VLCT has somebody, Trevor Whipple. He does all their police stuff, and they'll also come out and say, "Okay, everybody, you've got to update this." But I think that's great. Retraining, education—it's important. And we'll have to get some information out to everybody at that time yeah. on any changes. So, yep. I mean, welfare checks—you know, know, typically, you know, can be you know, can be a, a large number of those. You know. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, those happen often. Yeah, we've done. Somebody's I mean, I've had worried about their call. neighbor or yeah. friend or relative or we yeah. Have one almost every single day. Yeah. 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 Still currently we are still doing them. Uh, I just uh, we had sure. a meeting over there last week and it kind of came out too. But hey, we have a lot of changes. This is probably going to go away. Mm -hmm. We can't go anymore. Do you have any details on the actual full yeah. package or what is out from the criminal justice training? Council? Yeah. But that would be a big one for us to get out to yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But that would be a big one for us to get out to yeah, individuals know, in the community. Sure. Uh, you know. Yeah. Knowing that, just to let you know, based the new procedures, won't be able to do this or something. And who do I call? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And who do they call? And what can happen? Yeah, absolutely. We yeah. we've been through. I mean, I've had people call, and I'll say, mm. call VSP and have them do a welfare check. Yeah. So it'll be good to know. So yeah. excellent. Good. Just a heads up. I can hear the question now. Where do we go? Yeah, that's, yeah. What, oh, yeah. that's what Gene said, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think Lenny's taking all calls for welfare checks. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. He'll be over, he'll be over. I hear the question now. Yeah. I hear myself asking this. So yeah. We're asking the same question, and we're, we're hoping, this, yeah. we, we have two new sports instructors at our department over there, and obviously they're getting a little bit more lead in information than we get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so they're kind of looking at, you know, we're hoping we're going to have more information as directed to what to do, who we need to contact, and, what else is going to be changing going forward? Mm -hmm. uh, just, just as a food for thought, you know, my department we usually do one training a month for yeah. the actual department training, and they're so nervous at this point. Like, yeah, we're going to have to block all this entire week for training for an entire week. For yeah. Yep. And they're already trying to schedule like, oh yeah, we're going to pull this guy off the road for the entire week and have him be training next week with these guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Like, that makes us better. It'll have to come yeah. down to like, Changes. like what I had out there in um, Right Road there. A few weeks ago. Yes, right. That's so right. It, it may end up being, you know, I had a gentleman I came across that, you know, I don't know, it was had 90 fallen. degrees. He had, he, you know, he's very elderly and had gone out and mowed all day. And yep. when I, I was going out there to look at the road or something. Yeah. And I mean, he lives way out of the way. I mean, there's only one other house out there. So, and I had driven by and he kind of, you know, kind of did a weird, there wasn't quite a wave. It was more almost flagging me yeah. down type thing. But I knew I was just going to turn around the dairy farm and come back through anyways. And. When I came back through, he had been sitting there for a while, you know, he'd fallen down, couldn't get back up, and, you know, and, and then I got home, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, geez, I wonder if somebody can go out and just check on him later, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I called you, yeah, and, and I see said, if Oscar's Call around, that. but we ended up, you know, calling a neighbor that went over His and checked family, him, but, yeah. you know, it's, it's probably going to have to be like that, where you're going to have to, you know, trust thy neighbor, and, you know. Right, unless there's another social service agency that's going to yeah. pick it up, but sometimes it's just that, or it's, you know, mm -hmm. we've had a you know, power outages, this and that. And sometimes, you know, so mm -hmm. neighbors are good, but, but it's good to know. So or, we'll definitely or you get, that. you know, extreme weather events and oh, things yeah. like that, right? Which then we're asking neighbors, if you know your neighbors, go yeah. check on your, or if you don't even know, just go check on your neighbors. Especially like cold, you know. <clears throat> and heat. Yeah. And yeah, it's true. So, well, we appreciate your time tonight, Justin, and welcome aboard. <clears throat> it's good to put the name of the face and... Yeah. And, and just my name is Gene. <laughs> and I drive a Subaru. Yeah. Gene Krause is in this place. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Uh, okay. If you get any complaints from German Shepherd on the road, it's just mine. So. Which <laughs> road? You'll know. Don't worry. So you don't want to leave No. <laughs> but. Oh. Well, I appreciate you guys' time. Yeah. Obviously, I'm sure you guys have a number or who says it. I do. Yeah, remember to update the... Uh, it's on phone. there. Is it on the yeah. list? Okay. Okay. Good. Well, thank you. Thank have you. a good evening. Take care, Justin.
Well, my dog has actually been very good lately. <laughs> sure. He is all legal sure except for when has. he gets off the property. <laughs> when he runs he off. He likes to watch cars. It's... All right. Public comment or inquiry? I just got one question. Sure. Another discussion about ballots. Have you moved from the Oh, I, so about ballots. So where I answered, so Owen asked me a question via email. I know, and I'm just going to let the select board know. So he, Owen emailed me, CC'd Lindley, and CC'd Lenny. So it was Owen Lenny, and um, asked about ballots, if we were going to go to Australian, all going to Australian ballot in March. So I explained that you have to vote on it at town meeting and then right. it takes another year. But I also explained there's more than one way to do it. You can vote, you could you could vote to vote in the future that all your officers and your public questions go on the ballot. Right. Or you could vote that all your officers, public questions and your budget articles go on the ballot. Yeah. So it kind of depends. There's options. So the select board can discuss it somewhat. You can also pass a petition to force the select board basically to put it on a warning. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't really talked about it that much. I will say this, I do personally, because I, I, a town that I had was, we, they voted the officers, mm -hmm. Australian ballot, and I actually thought it was helpful because then you knew in advance who was running and things like that. And your public questions got a little tricky for zoning, but it was okay. But what we voted the budget in person and I have now and, and I'm actually glad that we did that and, and I would be personally maybe a little saddened to see the budget go Australian ballot because you attended it we had a select board meeting and there was what maybe 15 people there yeah. then when we did the budget information I think there was nine including six which was myself in the select board yeah. so my yeah. concern is when you go to put the budget on Australian yeah. ballot you don't have a real informed. Right. You don't have the discussion. You know, you don't have the discussion, and people we put out town meet town report, right. Right. but we know people don't. But I will read it. The popular things are who got married, who died, and who had a baby, and who's delinquent on the taxes. Those are the. Yeah. I think if we just printed those pages. We'd be free and clear. <laughs> so, um, and that's not just here. That's everywhere. Yeah. So, there are a couple different ways to do it, but I think that. Um, so I think that. They, the select board would have the discussion and then, but they can be forced, frankly. You can force the select board to put it on the ballot, but I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. I'm hoping that they. So probably at what will happen at this point, Lenny, not speaking for the whole board September, members, but October. is will, the board will have a discussion between yeah. now and, you know, well, warning know. time. Yeah, yeah, what we. So many more people yeah. took the time. To even if they lightly inform themselves and inform themselves about what the select board does, mm -hmm. who's on the select board, so now more people to know. So I, in my mind, I think it's a way to get the people of this town more active in what's going on, especially the younger people, because they're the, they're the generations to come. You know, be here. So that's my thinking, and it gives them some sort of, for lack of better terms, power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Do you feel that for everything, budget and everything, are we thinking just know. officers? Or, yeah. 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 That I would like to have that discussion a little bit more. Yeah. The interesting thing is, if you, the good news is, if you put it on the town meeting warning, then it becomes a discussion with a yeah. hundred and some odd people, because that's yeah. how many people turn out at town meeting, and those people are at town meeting because they want to be there. So I think that it's probably a good place to have that discussion. But the net net of having the budget is being presented at the town meeting, so the options are accepted or not. Right. At that point. When you do it on the ballot. When on you, ballot. No, no. When you do it in a discussion, we presenting as a select board, we present the budget uh -huh. to the taxpayers, and the only op the option isn't. To discuss it, pick right? It no, out. it's yes or no. It's up or it's down. Up or down. It's exactly. No at that point. With Australian yeah. ballot. But no. Yes. Even with the discussion. No. Well, no. he's town meeting. The, the when you have the discussion prior to Australian ballot, 
You're right. There, you can talk about oh, it. Yeah. Right. Yes, you can talk oh, about it at discussion, but, but no said. changes can right. be made. The yeah. day of town meeting, it's there, and that's it. Yeah. And it's a yes or a no. Much, yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Same yeah. with the Australian dollar. Right. Right. But the informational meeting becomes more important because that's the discussion phase before them for people. Right. Questions. But yeah, yeah. But the problem is, is just what you said yeah. is if you're discussing it before us, you have a discussion you know, public informational, it's already gone it's to print. You can't change anything. Whereas right. when you go have that town meeting, yeah, you can, you can, you can vote it up or down. You can right. change the budget on town meeting day when you vote off the floor. People can amend an article to give, remember, we want to give this appropriation $500 mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. or they could also vote to reduce the budget by 10 grand. They can do it right there yeah. because it's more interactive right. and, and tends to be those people that are there, and this is again my opinion only, or at town meeting, probably have read the town report, and they have a list of questions about the budget. Whereas, like I said, and public officers kind of nice because it also forces people to stand up and say, I'm going to run. And it gives people a chance to say, oh, okay, Paul Valley's gonna run. What do I know about Paul Valley? He's gonna run against, uh, uh, against you know, Gene. So you kind of can, you know who's running instead of being off the floor. The other thing is too that always, I think about someone like Pam, um, if you're the town clerk and you run every year, like you do here, you lose your seat and your job like that with no heads up. Whereas if it's Australian ballot, you know if somebody's running against you. And as an elected official like that, there's no unemployment, you're an elected official, you're done, yeah. See it right now, and someone starts taking on the minutes, right. and away you go. Crazy, <clears throat> they do absolutely. Yeah. But I do think, I, I think that it's. I almost think they kind of go against each other. I think the the public questions and the ballots by officers force someone to be to figure it out ahead of time, yes. whereas the budget they don't have to figure it out ahead of time because it's just yes mm -hmm. or no. And then yeah. if it goes down on a yes or no question on a ballot, we have no idea why yeah, it went down. And we have to choose, is it too high, too low, where do we cut? So it's a, it's funny. Yeah, my question would be then, how much discussion happens before the decision is made with the public, before the decision is made about the budget? Is there room for that? Oh yeah, have you ever been to town meeting? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, they, I mean, people stand up and you know, Chris does a nice overview of the budget. And near the beginning of the meeting, and then when the question comes up and it says, you know, this is the article and this is how much can be raised by taxes, we've spent a lot of time, hours. Right, right there, does that, like, let's say you bring this to, how many meetings do you schedule before the vote? For the budget? For the budget. Only one, because we voted at town meeting. Now, we, the select board myself, have been discussing the budget as a warning item since I've been working, I'll start working on it like September, <coughs> October, or September, yeah, months, and then months, they've been working on it for months, and they have paraded in the rec department, the fire department, right. the public work, so they've been yeah. discussing it publicly, so if someone is attending the meetings or reading the minutes, yeah. these guys have been working on the budget for a few months, and then they make a decision, we finally say, okay, this is what we're at, this is what we're gonna put in the town report, mm -hmm. Then it goes to the voters, mm -hmm. and it would go, in our case, it goes you know, off the floor. Yeah. And so then people standing there, they still could say, I want to cut that budget by $10,000, or I want to add $500 more to um, home health and hospice or something. So right off the floor, it, it changes right mm -hmm. then, right or then. can, mm -hmm. and then it's voted and it's done. It, it, can, it can be definitely be, and, and you know the 15 years I've been here, it's you know I I would you know I would say when I moved here became my more civil career of attending you know functions like this you know mm -hmm. um, I was in my mid 20s but you know but before you know places I'd been at before I mean you just go and you vote and wow. and I would say as a <clears throat> you know, early, mid-twenties person, like, you know, you kind of went and vote, and maybe you kind of knew who you were voting for, mm -hmm. but you really didn't have all the background mm -hmm. information. You know, you kind of went and voted, you know? Mm -hmm. um, where when I came to Bethel, it was, you know, I remember going to the first town meeting, I was like, you know, I sat there, and it was like, oh my God. Like, I, of course, this was back when, like, I mean, 
the, the budget would take like literally like three hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, there would be like people would get up and want to change something, and the next person would want to mm -hmm. change something. So it's got like, and then like the TV stations are outside because Bethel is one of bellwether. You know, one of the half dozen towns. You know, so it, it, it's like this really special little group mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. But at the same time just as many uninformed people can come to those meetings and just propose something out of the blue and somebody seconds it and then all of a sudden you're trying to scramble to figure out how that even plays into what yeah. and it's yeah way. it's crazy yeah oh absolutely but what I, what I what i would say that i did like about it was opposed from this year and nothing against gene but it was like the like people that are going to run for a seat even if it was like school because it all came from the floor right so you would have an individual that would yeah, you kind of knew who wanted to do it, you know, so someone already had, like, I'm going to nominate Paul, you know, and Paul would stand up, and then, then they would both kind of, or whoever it was. Yeah, yeah, so, but what was kind of neat was, yeah, because I had a chance to meet the way through, yeah, if it's just one form. But what was kind of neat is you got to see, like, who he was, and what he wanted to do. Gene talked to us about who he was. That right there was enough for me to say, well, I don't like this, I don't like this, huh? And did I agree with everything? No, but I had some, instead of having the meat and potatoes, I at least had half potatoes. Right. You know whereas, I mean? whereas if you're at town meeting, the person stands up and may or may not give a prepared space. You don't know him from Adam. I don't know him. And, and you can't grill him. <laughs> no, but what I was getting at was, yeah. like this I go around you. was, out of all the years I've been here at 14 years, somebody, it's always been from the floor, right? Right. Yeah. So then it became, okay, Gene and Paul are running. So Gene and Paul both got nominated, and then they both have an opportunity to get up in front of people and, you know, introduce themselves, right? Because at the end of the day, you're not, you don't run for a select board, or you shouldn't run for a select board position based on, I'm coming here to, because I want the Jarvis swimming pool. You know, I mean, yeah. that's not the way, and if you go into it looking like that, then, the Jarvis speed bump. but you know what I mean? It's like, because really, we're just appointees that we're just trying to work through common, uh, common challenges for the better good of the town. Right. But, but like this year, and it, no, it had nothing to do with the candidates, it just has to do with the process, is it becomes very highly politicized yeah. because it's out there so long, you know what I mean? So instead of like, you two, you two are running against each other, you stand up and you make a speech, and I've done this for so many years. What's wrong with that? Well, because it, the, it no, the, the way I saw it this year is it got into dirty politics. Um, where typically at town, we don't have dirty politics. And it really, and it, again, it had nothing to do with the people. It had to do with the process. Because naturally what happens is so-and-so wants to get behind this person and so-and-so wants to talk bad about that person. And it just became really ugly this year. And that, that's what kind of... Is it my experience that the time I've been here, they just don't get involved. And so there's just one person. Like, they just get sworn in no matter what. There's nobody to challenge. There's no information about the person. I didn't know anything about you, or you, or even Terry, until I started, until I started coming more to these meetings. So sure, I yeah. knew, I had a sense of why Wayne wanted to be a select board member. Mm -hmm. I had a sense of why he wanted to, whether it was a month before, whether we just capped it at, we start this two months before, or one month, I at least had a sense of who the individual might be, and what their purpose was for running on the board. I don't see a problem, personally, <coughs> with um, having that happen. And people think size anything. You know, I know that a lot of people vote just because they know something. Oh, sure. Majority, oh, of, right. majority of people they vote based vote on recognition and, and oh, yeah. Or good, or good ability. Sure. So why not give them the opportunity to say why I should vote for them? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think there's... I, if we are voting for pros them... And cons. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's definitely... Them. Good and bad yep. about all the processes, yeah. And I, I think what we'll do at this point is our board will talk about, because right now we default back to the original, mm -hmm. which is in-person town meeting. Right. Um, so we will have a discussion on should we put this on the, uh, the warning or not. And let's say, let's say we decide not to, okay? Then the next step would be then individuals from the community 
would have the option to petition that to how put it on there. How many names do you need on a petition just to get um, I'd have to check. I can't remember if it's 1% or it's either 1, 3, or 5% of the right. checklist, and I don't, I could find out. Yeah. If it came to that, I, I, you'd ask me, and I'd tell you, I have to look. I, I the statute changes. Said. I like what you just said about the budget, because there are differences, and you know, we voted mm -hmm. for a person who's going to execute the budget and stuff like that, and the budget itself. Mm -hmm. Right. So I understand that, but I think the person, I want to at least have a little bit of trust in every member on the select board. You know what I mean? That I say, okay, I got it. Okay, I can trust that they're going to do this for good reasons, not because of. Yeah. And when I have that, it feels, it keeps me away from the selector. It keeps yeah. me away from participating. You, 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 I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. No, I, kind of, I think, I mean, I kind of get what you're saying. The, the other thing, too, is, is, you know, I don't know if the Herald does, did the Herald do a meet the candidates where they did a little interview with you with the Herald and put something in the newspaper? Yeah. They yeah. did. Oh, that's good because that yeah, also yeah, helps yeah. to it. And yeah. people yeah. could do that even if they yeah. are going to run off the floor. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you know, a lot of times around. people, yeah, could do that. And of course, there was letters to the editor, which was nice because right. that, you know, especially, well, oh, Gene, Gene oh, wrote something yeah, and it was very yeah, nice. Yeah, and, yeah, and so did Wayne, yeah. and it talked a little bit about themselves, yeah. whereas you don't always get that. Yeah. And, and this year did force to, to learn more about who people were and. And, um, but yeah, and I also think too, it's hard because my, my concern about going fully Australian ballot is you lose that small town yes. of the mm -hmm. town mm -hmm. meeting because it's such mm -hmm. a big thing here in Bethel with pie and yeah, you know, everything we always did where we, we did it in the evening, the Monday night before we did the big informational mm -hmm. budget. And then the mm -hmm. next day you voted and there was cookies and coffee mm -hmm. and you know, and you had a hundred and some odd people, and it was, I haven't seen Paul since, you know, for six months. And so you, right. that's that nice, that's yeah. a great thing about why we live in a small town, too. But, but it's good to know that we, it's not all or nothing. It you is not, I mean? yeah. Yeah, you can do some variations yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But, so I'll put it on there. Uh, and and we should probably, we should probably take it up at a board level. Yeah, I think so. And, well, what I was saying is we should take it up with the board level with enough time so that if yeah. we decide not to go in oh. one direction, yeah. that then the public has the ample time to petition to have it on. Because yeah. if we waited until the last second and said, no, we're not going to do it, yeah. but now it's not enough time to petition it. So I don't know how much time you need, but if you could well, let the board know and say, okay, by the end of October, you would have to make your decision. Yeah, I think we should put that it on. That would give you enough time to petition to put it on. If, I, I think you know September, I mean? beginning of September, yeah. or end of, by, between September and October, because we approve, you approve the warning, and yeah. like we're slamming out the last minute, and you have the deadlines. But because we would this have, is an easier, you can make this decision. Yeah, because we would have to do that, because usually, I yeah. mean, we start talking about the budget, but we don't really are talking about the budget until like, Late November, yeah, or October, you know. November, yeah. I've been working. So I'll have it. I mean, it I sounds like we'd have to make a decision on this, like in October. Yeah, but it's, it sounds it's, good. It's a conversation that I want to make sure we have. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'll put it on for that. So then you're right, because I think so too. You need to have plenty of time because if they have to get signatures and you know, sure. there's some yeah. wording for the article and and, and it just yeah, it's not fair to make someone have to get those signatures in, in right. a day. It's right. things. Right. No, no, it's a good discussion to have though, but I'm glad you read the information and it was helpful in the email. So. But you do the right thing, Lenny. I mean the only the only way you're gonna know, you know, who is on the select you know, for the most part, is by being actively engaged, yeah. which you are and and that was the same thing with me. Like, I didn't know any of the select board members until I started coming to the meetings. And then I knew who, you know, Bill Richards and all those people were. And, and uh, you know, before I wouldn't, you know, you'd just see him out there at town meeting day. You know, I mean, that was, you know, because we didn't even do uh, this type of stuff back then. Like, you didn't have an ORCA video that you could watch, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, you know. So, um, Lindley, Lindley timed out, but she's coming back. So, we'll definitely have that discussion and we'll let you. We'll do it in a timely manner so yes. that it would give citizens the opportunity to petition if there was time. And, and Teresa will figure out what that yep. time frame would be. We'll put that on. So, so, yep, no, that's good. But I'm glad you got the email and that you yeah. got the information. Well, it is a lot. And I, I forwarded it to Pam and said, and said, hey, I sent them. Well, it's a problem. I wanted to make sure I gave you all the information. And so, I, and then I sent it to Pam and said, okay, this is what I sent to Lindley Owen and, 
and Lenny, can you, I, did I miss anything? And she read it, she's like, no, I think you covered it. I'm like, well, you don't want to scare them, but it's, I just want you to, it's a process. Well, good, I'm glad. <laughs> well, you brought up an important discussion, yeah. so, yeah. Absolutely. Any Ooh. further, anything? There's a lot of people uh, sitting here tonight, no? Um, Guess not? <laughs> All right. Too hot, everybody stayed home. Yeah, it must be. No AC in here. Um, so we'll move we'll move over to the error and emissions piece from the Lister's office. So we did not get the second one. I know there's one. She thought there might be one coming. Louise, Judy, and Mo thought there might be one coming for. Have a good night. by fourteen dollars. Yep. Um and so I was hoping we'd have another one because we're setting the tax rate. But if she does another one it's still gonna be very very it'll be low as well. Uh -huh. So she they just need a motion for you guys to approve or accept the um Aaron omission. Mm -hmm. I would motion to accept the <coughs> excuse me, the Aaron omission for the Harris Sergeant property. Second. Okay. No Lindley, so we are all set. I'm here. Oh, you oh. are there. Okay. <laughs> well, a minute ago you weren't there, so I... You want, you want to make a second? Yeah, anymore, turns out, so I am here. <laughs> you can't see my pretty face. There I you gotcha. go. All right. And then next we have setting the municipal vote on. tax rate. Uh, I don't think, well, all in favor, Lindley? Aye. Aye. All right. <laughs> Technicality. <Okay>. And let's <laughs> see. And then we have the tax rate setting. Yep. So I have used, obviously, her, the new number, the adjusted number um, for the municipal grand list. Mm -hmm. So we have not received the school tax rate, which is not a surprise. Yep. Um, and we're on a tight deadline. I, I wish, I really wish Bethel did not collect taxes in August because it takes, we have to get the tax bills out within a couple of days and, and the school seems to, you know, squeak that out later and later. So um, the, mm -hmm. the municipal tax rate is easy, it's just math, so we can set that. The local agreement rate, just to explain that, is that is the school tax portion of things that we vote to exempt in Bethel. For example, um, you had voted to give a veteran's exemption of thirty dollars to $40,000 to veterans. So it reduces their tax, you know, their, the property tax value by thirty dollars to $40,000. Mm -hmm. so, but you still have to liable to pay the school tax on that. Right. Also, the Grange is exempt from tax, but you mm -hmm. still have to pay the school tax amount. Last year it was, um, I think it was about, I think it was $8,000 and, um, which was the amount that calculates, but you need the school tax rate to calculate that. Mm -hmm. So obviously I don't have that. Um, so I put beside it that this current municipal tax rate would be 1.0408, and last year it was 1.0382, which is an increase of 0.25. Quarter of a percent? Percent, yeah. Quarter of a percent? Yep. So the thing that changes too is, it, which is always difficult, when you have the, this is the grand list as of now. Yep. Then if there's anyone who hasn't filed a homestead exemption, that will change that balance between homestead and non-residential grand list. That mm -hmm. kind of fluctuates because right now, someone who had not claimed if they were entitled to claim a um, their residency and qualify for a prebate, mm -hmm. they're now listed as a non-residential once they file the flag flips and they become homestead. Right. So, so it becomes a little bit of a... Which with the entity. later filings this year, you probably see more of we, that. We, I so think that... That happened with the tax filings that just... Well, was it May? Yeah. Yeah, May 15th this year. Yeah. yeah. Louise had told me that she thought most every, that I think she said they had most, everyone they expected to file a, for a prebate or file homestead declaration had. Okay. So, which is a good thing for us because it's right. last year, it was not the case with COVID and, and um, oh. so, yeah, so that's why we, one of the many reasons that we delayed. 
So okay. that would so be. Do we vote on it? <laughs> no, <coughs> you. This is the municipal this tax is, rate. Yeah. What's and going? So to, we just have to swallow whatever it or. So the school tax is a school tax. You have no say over that. Right. That's set by the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. So you can set your municipal tax rate, and then the school will be what the school will be. We have no say over that. That budget was passed, and then it goes to the state, and they crank it out of their per pupil thing. I don't know. I always say they do it with slide rule and abacus. But any, I just, any adjustments we bought we. Any adjustments, or, pretty much, yep. If there's any error and omissions, yep, by the listers later, yes, you yep. do. That's the way, I mean, that's the way it is. That's why the, you know, why we were talking about, like, the grand list and making sure we have three qualified listers is very important because the grand list, you know, is kind of God when it comes yeah. to your town. And it, and it um, runs the state, too. That's how yeah. they generate state tax, you know, for mm -hmm. rebates and other things. Is, yeah, is everything comes off that. List. Mm -hmm. But so that, that is... That is the math. Which is good because uh, we, you know, I think right around budget time we were talking at that point that it was going to be a little over a cent mm -hmm. increase. So it ended up being, you know, okay. a quarter of a cent. So, I mean, we're probably almost a cent better. So, so. so alphabet soup, what's CLA and COD? So the CLA is common your level common of level of appraisal. of appraisal and your COD is your coefficient disbursement. So your CLA is generated by um, your common level of appraisal takes in, and so does the COD, takes in, I believe, your past three, it's your past three years in sales. So if you've had this sort of, you know, up and down, like right now, we're obviously having a huge spike, which is yeah. going to affect us. Um, our CLA. So that's kind of what they help guide you as to when you need to have a reappraisal. Mm -hmm. If you fall, you know, if you get way over 100, or I think it's maybe in the 70s, then the state says, hey, yeah. when are you doing that reappraisal? You, so yeah. right now, we've kind of been hanging in there. So right now, it would, if I was to look at that 101.8, kind of says that our grand list maybe just by hair leans to the high side, but we know it's probably not true but it's now come because down. you've had pieces, you've had so many properties selling over mm -hmm. the listed value, that number is really gonna change, I think. And it was, I mean, it's come down over the last couple of years. Yeah. CLA, I think, was around 104 there yep. a couple of years ago, so it's kind of slowly yep. come down. Yep, and so it ends up, that's kind of what drives that thing, and, and yeah. uh, but we still do need to start planning. Which we've been talking about. Yeah, we got two or three years to do the common level appraisal again. Because you need to get, you need to do a reappraisal. Because what happens is, you know, maybe we can pick up what people have done for zoning permits and stuff. But if you know, if you've gutted the inside of your house and now you have a whole mm. new interior house, we don't know that. And it's been like 13 years since we've done a so reappraisal. Exactly, we finished all the floors in my house. Too. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just let us know when you're all done, Gene, and we'll come through. And, you know, or, <laughs> Or, you know, and, and, you know, have a brand new kitchen. So it affects the level of, you know, probably depreciation in your house and the value. So that's the only thing now. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about, you know, doing this um, reappraisals here for the last, I don't know, two years, let's yeah. say. Yeah. But, I mean, where the housing market is at right now, yeah. you know, unless it makes an about face correction here in the next year or two, it could adversely affect people in town. Mm hmm. You know where their houses could be valued higher than. I think it's already adverse. You know, you know what I mean. You could be at the. People aren't. Yeah, because you could be at the top of a bubble happening, yeah. and then you don't have another. Right. Yeah, exactly. for well, yeah, thirteen years. Fifteen years, years yeah. or so, you know. And then it, it does. So, I, so. It, for us, we know that. I think at this point, if mm -hmm. we. We're looking at a couple more years mm -hmm. until because by the time, well, it's usually a two-year process now. They used to do an appraisal in one year. Now it's a yeah. two-year. Deal. So I think what you'll see is us putting out an RFP and then it taking, mm -hmm. um, you know, people are busy because not everybody does municipal appraisals anymore. But anymore. our CLA has been in order. I mean, yeah. it's not like you're yeah. pushing 110% or it's not like, yeah. you know, you are in the sub 90s or yeah. something. So. I, yeah. I think that they work hard to, to really, yeah. you know. I'll it's pretty well down. balanced. But. Okay. So Gene moved it. Gene moved it. Lindley, you can second that. Sure. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Mo would be proud of you, Lindley. You know it's what I live for. <laughs> <laughs>
You gotta get out more. <laughs> <laughs> Just not today. It's really hot. I have, I have no excuse for myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we have taken that one off the list. Uh, as we had talked about the last meeting, um, Teresa was going to start giving us some information on future infrastructure projects and she has started to compile that list so we can start having discussions on it. Um, I think at this point, I mean, we can have a discussion on it, but I think for the most part it was just to get the information so we can start looking through what we have on our plate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's, a, there's the bigger thing, I guess, for me is that I think, um, and we've talked about this in the past, is due to these projects and really the water projects, for some, I back up, for, I don't know who, but when Bethel's sewer ordinance was drafted, in the sewer ordinance, it states that any debt incurred by the sewer department goes on the tax rate. Hmm. But when they did the water, they did not make the same choice, and I don't know why. Hmm. So what I think that you're, you're, you can easily see here is obviously I have, and I have admittedly low-balled, um, subsidies because I don't know what's coming down the pike. Whether we're going to get 25%, we're going to get 50%. And they say these things have been around. Well, um, we were supposed to get more subsidy than we ended up receiving on our $2.8 million loan. Mm -hmm. And part of that reason was uh, historic preservation ended up taking, or historic review took like five months. So even though we did everything we could do, we passed the bond vote, we got it in, we did not get all of the subsidy that we had hoped to see. Um, they ended up saving us some and giving us like an extra 66,000, but it has not um, got us where we need to be. We also just found out we did not get the lead subsidy that we thought we were going to get. That was seemingly, yeah. Or told we were. We getting. were told they, they, we were led to believe, and and it just came out recently. Um, yeah, and I don't know the dollar amount. Um, we I have worked with Aldrich and Elliot, and, and um, I wrote uh, with their help. I we wrote a letter to the state, basically saying that hey, you know, you guys had a delay. And that cost us two hundred and forty thousand dollars in um, a subsidy that we didn't get because we qualified. We'd done everything we could, and they had also we were we were told our project would be eligible for the lead abatement subsidy, and that has not happened. And I don't know, and no one seems to be able to tell me exactly when the DEC decided that lead, you know, galvanized paint has lead in it. So we found out the money, pretty much a lot of the money went to Bennington. And I think they actually had lead pipe where we had <coughs> the galvanized coating. So we have written to them to say, wait a second. And, and for me, I didn't realize, I we never received notification that we were not mm. gonna get the lead subsidy because even up until our last meeting <coughs> with Aldrich and Elliot and the state, even the state was saying, keeping your lead subsidy, your galvanized spreadsheet up to date, we were all okay. So the fact that we received less of the 25% subsidy wasn't an end all be all in my book because we were gonna make it up on the back end. Mm -hmm. Well, then when they said, no, you don't get the 240, um, it took too long to get through the process, which wasn't even our fault, and now you're not getting the lead subsidy. Um, needless to say, my head just about exploded and I had a couple people on the phone um, so anyways, we budgeted a $16,000 and change loan payment. That loan payment's gonna be 32,000. So it's going to go from, we have a bit this year, which is, a, so it kind of is easing people into the rate. Um, however, you know, it's gonna work out to be 17 cents a day is gonna be the bond payment. It's gonna be 17 cents a day on the users. That being said, the water users. The water users. But that being said, I think that future projects need to go on the tax rate because you have a bigger quantity of people than that you can spread the the um, payment out over. And you're already doing it for sewer. And I believe, obviously, having a water system is a benefit to everybody. Just like people in the village, uh, Paul, Chris, uh, you're still paying for gravel roads and you're still paying for sanding and grading. So I think there's a case to be made here that 
people that don't live inside the village are also paying, you know, everybody's paying for a little bit of their sure. share. Yeah, I mean, we all pay for so, when I So what I listed here were the projects. Um, and, and the other thing too is, I'm gonna say, is the fight is not over yet. The loan, because the project, the 2.8 has gone, it won't even hit next year's, the budget we just did. That 16,000 will set aside um, to put in reserve, but we're still fighting this. So we have still written, sure, we're yeah. still hope of more subsidy to get that back. We also know there's lead money coming in because of the ARPA money. And so this isn't over, uh, you know, until somebody thinks. And so we're, we're kind of working on that. So that, isn't, while it's discouraging, um, is not a done deal. Isn't Bicentennial Lane, isn't that a private system? No. Nope, it's not. Are you sure? I'm absolutely I, positive. Nope, because... I've been through like two nope. hearings here when they tried to turn it over to sewer. the town and we sewer were... Oh, sewer is private. I thought the water too. No, just no. sewer. It's just a sewer? Yes. Yeah. Why did they do just private sewer but not Good question. Uh, water? We that don't know why sense. they touched it. We don't know. The other news... Okay, so it's water is... Yep. Uh, I didn't know that. So, I, so as you can like I said, I so I did budget... 40 year loans at 0%. That is a big savings to us. So I did keep that in my estimation. I did a 25% subsidy for phase two, and then you can see I did a lesser subsidy only because I don't know. And if I personally am gonna err on one side, it's gonna to be to be fiscally conservative. So we don't know what we're gonna see. Uh -huh. But this also proves my point, which is says, st stop thinking about the town office. We need to put on the new roof. We need to fix the siding. We're not going anywhere for, 15, 20 years. We'll remove the fuel tank, we'll do the siding, but we can't because we need to do the town garage. The good news about the town garage is I already have a payment budgeted in the, this year's budget. So despite, you know, we'll move that into the capital building fund. But so anyways, these are, as I said, projections only. Um, and I also tried to be responsible in my estimation on growth in the grand list. So when I say 1.52%, you know, that's, I'm saying, okay, there's no growth in the grand list. Then I said there was a little bit of growth. Then I said there was no growth. So, you know, I don't, my crystal ball's a little foggy. So I'm trying sure. to guesstimate. Do you, do you have, um, I think it's great that we have a time frame of when we want to replace these yep. areas, but do you have the actual combination of when these pipes were put in the ground versus what is the... Sure. You know, uh, well, we didn't. These numbers came from Tim. We sat down rate and talked about forty years, twenty years. Yeah. You know, where we sit in that. That's piece. why they're kind of done in this order. And we also remember you guys had before I came. You had a um, oh uh, a planning study. Remember, you guys paid to have Alder Janelli come in and do look at everything and kind of try to give you some estimates. Oh, yeah. So, and I did talk to Tim a little bit about this, and and he says same thing I do. Look, <clears throat> some of this phase three, four, and five could change because it's really driven, and some of this is gonna be repairs, all of a sudden maybe we're seeing, you know, Rabbit Hollow or something, or Royalton is, uh, you know, Royalton Hill is just falling apart. Then you may have to jockey those two, you know, you may have to jockey this a little bit about, or we may end up changing um, a little bit the makeup of the projects, but these are obviously just estimates and to give us a kind of a rough idea what we may be looking at and, and are they a little worst case scenario maybe but I guess I'd rather have you know mm. something a little bit like that the other good news is do not count out Bernie Sanders because I have not gotten cut out of that fight just yet she called, I talked to Haley she asked me a question I answered her <laughs> and I haven't got thrown out yet I thought I would know by Thursday or Friday if we were still in the mix and we won't know until October but and she did say to me, well, what if you only got money for the water portion? I'm like, beggars can't be choosers. I'll take whatever I want the entire thing. But if I can only get part, then. So, you know, and obviously we have, we also have the money coming, American Rescue Plan money that we've talked about putting in the ground for water sewer. So, you know, when, in our case, you know, we may do some pump replacement, some things. So mm -hmm. we're kind of waiting to see there. Um, what the guidelines will come from the feds, but these aren't horrible. The worst year that's horrible is and, and was the three point was phase three. But like I said, we would never do that big of a project without honestly. We'd have to have more than a 10% subsidy probably. But I'm just trying to give you some ideas. So 
I, I was just curious. That no, sir. Crystal Drive and Graham Street. Yeah. Seemed to me to be part of the River Street. <laughs> Well, <laughs> part of the thing that's driving it, Crystal in particular, is the state. You the have water, a you have water pressure issues that we're having. Yeah, you have a, an evaluation every year. Uh, they come in and they basically look at your system and they tell you what the problems are. And we know Crystal Drive is a problem. And we had been on the list. We had to have um, a possible solution back to them by a certain date in December, which we did. So there, that's really. Um, that's a big deal, and it's got a big price tag on it. But we so still Crystal talked Drive. about the potential of doing wells instead but of... But we ran the numbers, and they, it's yeah, better it to go through sense. the process because we'd get more subsidy than um, they thought. And the other problem is, too, once we really looked up there at that area, <clears throat> the housing is so tight that it, it was going to be a lot of legal. Um, to drill gonna, the wells? And is it going to mm -hmm. go on your property, and yeah. who is it going to tap? Are you going to need an easement? And yeah, they're having issues up there with the minimum pressure. Pressure. Because, so you have to have a yeah. certain minimum pressure up there, and I'm ours just, I would just, I would waffles. I'm just curious and, that you've yeah. got some River Street in terms of contiguous. Yeah. And then Hyacinth Street and Highland Avenue. Mm-hmm. Why aren't they in the... Well, what's not driving them is not location. It's issue. It's age of pipe. It's what they've had for repairs just, in the past year. But just, no, it's a good yeah. question. But you that's know, why. why. And I think there's... If you're yeah. in an area, why? Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. And I think like Teresa was saying, there's still, there's still some opportunity that some of those streets may flip-flop or, yeah. you know, you it, might be able to... It, it depends. It just, it just, I don't know if that makes... How much difference that makes. But anyway... Yeah. But no, it's a good and, and again, the issue we're having in Bethel is, you, know, you look at these phases, you know, one through five, which basically, you know, counts, you know, a very large majority of all your water pipe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, this is over a 15-year um, schedule when you should be doing this over a 40-year schedule, you know, or 50 or whatever. And because we because we in town decided that we weren't going to do anything for the last 25 years of it. Now we're forced trying to get this in a smaller window, which now Therese brings up a valid point of how, how do we do this and make it fiscally palatable for yeah. the end users. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the end user can only the go. The argument has to be yeah. an infrastructure argument versus a use argument. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it becomes because eventually oh, yeah. well, you're going to price people out. People, you know, yeah. because you know the users, water users, or users pay the water, and they also pay, you know, taxes. And it, and it just becomes a mm. point where it's it's almost too much. And and I have argued in the past, and, and that it's like the 2.8, I'm I'm fine. I think the 2.8 should go on the users. There's been a lot of system, and there has not been a lot of maintenance. So for years, people have been able to take advantage of a very low rate. Um, but it comes a point where mm. you just it, it's you just you can't continue to put that burden on there, and I think there's a huge value to the water system, water and sewer system. So you should be able to um, you know, and, and I think that that's a value of the system to the entire town, not just the people on the system. And, and I think you're going to see mind. you're going to see just like what we're dealing with at the town level is you're going to see a short-term spike in, you know, rates, but a long-term benefit, you know, and, yep. and um, it's just trying to get this all done in a <clears throat> well, just trying reasonable. To it because it's difficult to see that long-term benefit. Yeah. <clears throat> when you're on a fixed sure. income, like we Absolutely. Had folks come in and, exactly. you know, and it immediately impacts their budget. Yeah. yeah. The, the good news is while we raise the budget, we raise the water budget this year to pick up that note, uh, the 16000 which is what I thought the payment was going to be at the time. It, it kind of brought the budget up a little bit, and, and then if we, ha if we don't get more funding, we'll go from there. But at least it, it kind of is, it didn't go from here to here. Um, we the other get. thing is, too, I think that, and I should have looked, I apologize, I should have looked to see at my financials. I feel like you have a water note that's going to pay off, too. So I'll double check mm -hmm. that. Um, well, if we have to, we can... Um send a mailer out to all the users um, that they can send their 
send the state, where's our money? Well, you know, I'm telling <laughs> you. To the pieces that we just got. Well, the other problem is that you're not growing any new yeah. users. There's yeah, exactly. All, all of your new growth is is in the outlying areas with yeah. wells and, yeah. right. and septic systems. You, so you you're not right. growing any new yeah. customers. Well, and that's the other pitch. You know, that's, that's an excellent point, actually, Paul. I'm going to write that down for my, you know, possibly disgruntled letter that I mailed to the state. Uh, the one that we did with Wayne was actually nice, but um, but Paul makes a good point because, you know, once you, you know, that money that we aren't going to get is difficult because, you know, it really made it more palatable for, for users. And now all of a sudden, if I can't get that money and they say, oh, well, maybe on a future loan, we'll discount it by that much. That doesn't help the user who's already eating, right. you know, right. that, that percent. So. We don't have any land to develop to, to grow right right system to offset that and, and not to mention the fact that the state won't let us because we have violated the rules they actually have us on a our permit says we can't add any new use so you're not we're trying to fix you say we can't expand because you have this strike against us we're spending the money and so they're kind of not giving us aid and yet also hurting us at the same time yeah but they're also pushing it to that the burden is going to have to be borne by all the taxpayers I mean, yeah. Well, just like everything else in the yeah. state. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna you know, education and yeah, and, this, areas, and, right? and the funny, yeah, and the state's telling us we can't even expand. Right. So right now, because yeah. of certain things we haven't done, so we're saying you can't expand, and we're not going to give you the money we said we'd give you in the first place. So I think also what happens is we had Patrick Smart and Tim Raymond stand up here at that meeting and talk to us. Now both of those two, they no longer work there. Ashley went from the, who was very good, I spoke to her today, she went from the state to the bond bank and she even said to me they didn't fill her spot for five to six months. So it's very easy for people to say at the state level, well, you know, that decision, you know, or whatever happened. And um, so no one's really standing up to say, hey, well, we'll have to tell we did tell you this. Kurt and Dick about this and maybe yeah. they can yeah. put a little maybe pressure on somebody to say, yeah. You know, this money was promised to our town, and we went ahead with this project based upon that. And now you're yeah. telling us in the back end, ah, well, yeah. you're not going to get all your money because you know some people uh, aren't here anymore that maybe have promised that to yeah. you. You know, that's and not I, right. It is, and the thing too, that's why they have <laughs> you go for the whole 2.8 million because yeah. eventually you yeah. know you have to pass the bond well, yeah. for that much in case yeah. you're on the hook. But so we ended up. I actually did do the math. So we ended up. Um, we had to take a bigger loan of 239,000. And then we received less subsidy. So I actually feel like we got hosed out of about 400 and, you know, I think. But because, when you say 400 and something, well, what's that Well, this is of? what I did because here, yeah. you tell me. This is what. Because the original oh, was 2.8 of right. which and, we and had like 1.1 one, one something. No, we were going to borrow 1.050. Okay. We ended up having to borrow 1.289. So we had to borrow 239,000 more. We then we thought we were going to get a 25% subsidy of 437.5, and we got 154. So we got shorted 283 right. bucks in subsidy. Then over here, our 50% disadvantage subsidy, we got a little bit more. Yeah. So if I took in my additional loan plus what we got shorted and subtracted what right. we made, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying there's 479.605 because we ended up having to borrow more money. Um, instead of the 1050. Now, how much of that went into stormwater? No, oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, grand or something, maybe? Maybe, I'd have to ask. You know, which, I don't have, I have a we got, next you know, Tuesday. Needed to be done and we got, an, yeah, yeah. you know, a good rate on, but. Yeah. You know, that's a question too, is I can ask our lawyer. But when we had set those water rates, I think that was based on like a one, two number, wasn't it? When I set the, which one, on the mailer or our most recent budget? The most recent budget. I, Wasn't it like a one, two something? No, or? it was six. I did on six something because oh. we were anticipating. I calculated my numbers. Oh, I sent right. it. Yeah, okay. I sent it to the engineer and said, "Does this look right?" He says, um, "I think so." I go with his number, and then I come back and do some. When I get my numbers from the state, I said, "Wait a second, this isn't right." No, so I, then I, I guess what I meant is the original numbers that we had received before we started the project. Remember, mm -hmm. it was like. Yeah, one point, yeah. yeah. Thirteen cent thirteen dollars a quarter or something like that. Right. Yeah. It was it was that was based on the one and two. And that, and it's about seventeen. <clears throat> right. 
instead right. of the 13, it's about 70. Now that being said, we also, that was a couple years ago based on those numbers and that many right. users. So the user's rate. So I tried to average okay. it out, but I came up to the loan payment of the 32 is 17 cents a day for a user. Right. Um, but I would, I would like I definitely said, I'm not play hardball and over this. We yeah, can always well, get yeah. Dick and Kurt involved. It means that so, they are out of session and get a little time to kill, to yeah. Investigate. When we wrote our letter to the state, we were asking for the two hundred forty thousand. But yeah. what just when you said that about stormwater, what I'm wondering is once I find a value of the stormwater, I wonder if I ask our town attorney if we could put that portion of the stormwater payment on to the tax rate, not the users. But well, I'm that was sure. done through change orders, wasn't it? It was, but we, I have to ask him because of the way that we voted it, um, I, I have to ask, but it's something yeah. that we did not anticipate at the time of the 2.8. It needed to be done. We had the ground open. And, yeah. well, not to mention the fact that they were sitting there saying to it, oh, yeah, everything qualifies. It qualifies. Yeah. Well, we Which, had a little money set aside for that We did. Anyways, I had 15000 right? yeah, but bit, yeah. And we paid that out of pocket, but the, what mm. qualified, quote, unquote, was meaning we get the 0% interest, which is great, but she also yeah. felt we were gonna get some subsidy dollars. So I'll take a look and see what I can do about yeah. that. Yeah, I play hardball with them. Oh, it's just frustrating, actually. When Lindley gets back, she will send her on a mission. That's right. Um, okay, so I'll ask him. So do we wanna have any further discussions on the future infrastructure projects this evening, or we just take them all it over and continue on Ask here. 15. <laughs> there you <Years>. go. <laughs> Let me look at my crystal ball. Oh, that's right. I, I will say that, you know, in all the years I lived here, except for last year, it seemed like often the town was spending a sizable amount of money and commitments a year on fixing water breaks. Yeah. So, I don't know what that exact dollar was. Maybe, maybe it was ten grand, forty grand, whatever it was. But it always seemed like they were digging up something to fix something <laughs> that was broken. And this year, I would say, other than a couple of outliers, mm -hmm. we hadn't had that. So, I don't know what that value is, but it's obviously yeah. money we're not having to spend directly, right. or we're able to develop, you know, put those resources somewhere else yeah. that are more critical. But you know, that's got to be worth something. The other thing that I found was interesting going back, and I actually had this conversation with Tim, when you look back on your water rates, you never really included the cost to manage the, um, oh, Lindley, she's had another problem. Let's see. Oh, sorry, Lindley. She's gone. Yeah, I know. Let's see. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. Um, so Lindley said her internet connection is too unstable. She's sorry, but hmm. she. So, um, anyways, what, what I was looked noticed is, in the past, you didn't have. I think that this public works department was paying whoever ran the water system because you didn't. It seemed like if there was a break, it got billed to the water. But now we put like 15% of Tim's salary in there and 18 or 15 or 18 percent of Richards. So, but that wasn't happening before. So the town was, I think, subsidizing the water department Probably. because you weren't paying, they weren't paying workers comp, they weren't paying right. retirement and all that stuff. Not so sure. once we started changing it, and even now the sewer department, you know, carries the majority and they always have, but they carried all the buddies, but water didn't. So frankly, if people were paying what they should have years ago, I wonder if this discussion we're going to have would have come up Sooner, or they would have amended the water ordinance. Well, I mean, look at the old out. budgets, you know, where things like, you know, potential retirements and things like that that were coming up. Like, we didn't have money put aside to pay out a retirement, or, yeah. you know, we had some doozies that yeah, got paid out, yeah, like, you know, in yeah. the one or two year periods. And, and now we're down to things. just, I think we just down to the transfer station has one, we have one, and mm -hmm. I'm actually going to start paying him per year, like paying X amount of hours per year to buy him down and then, but he can't accrue anymore. So he can, you know, we can buy him down, but eventually, hopefully before he retires, we will have bought him out of his, you know, that crazy max and not allow them to accrue. So, so what do you got left on town manager's report? Looks so, like. I have a question on the water update reports. Okay. Two inch water mains? Yep. 
Let me flip to that. Yes, yep, that's pretty small. Have you ever been up upper They're Cushing? Very small. I mean, it's not enough to feed a fire truck. No, it's, it's, it's well, they wouldn't feed I'm, a fire truck from up there anyways. The hydrant has to have an eight inch main. Yeah. But if you go up to upper, <laughs> upper Cushing, that's, there's only a couple houses and there's no room for development. So it's fine. So no, and that's all engineered. We we had yeah, talked about I, I, it. I understand. It just, it just <laughs> holy mackerel. Yeah, you'd be surprised how much water can get through there. Well, but yeah, some of that too is engineered people. by that size to be able well, to get the pressure that they need up there too, right? right? Yeah. When you're shrinking. So because your they go up and, and they would yeah there'd be a, their hydrants are you have down an elevation. Here anyways, so yeah, because you're right. On the same um, because it wouldn't have fed a fire truck up there anyways. Then they wouldn't. Yeah. They'd hook up below. Well, I don't know just. Okay. It seems yeah. crazy, doesn't it? I, but yeah, yeah no, nope, it's it's legit. I've been, <laughs> been on a fire department. I know much what a two and a half inch hose is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, mean, that's, <laughs> I know, and it's funny, but yeah. So, but all the hydrants obviously have to be now off an eight or I think it's eight inch main or ten eight inch main now. So all of our hydrants yeah. will be, and they oh, would get their exactly. water from here. But honestly, a lot of times they pick it out of the river if it's not high, but. Um, but yeah, no, when it's engineered and part of it is right, Chris is right, you have to keep pressure. And um, you have a substantial a elevation change. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just yep. saw that. And I was, you were like, what? My head was spinning. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I like yeah. when I dug up my water. Oh, no, I just, okay. I no, just saw that. that in there. My head was spinning. I'm sure that everybody thinks it's enough, yeah. but my God. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? It's not it? much. No. Um, so the other thing was, I just remind you that your planning commission report and public hearing notice are in your packet. Uh -huh. So that will be, you know, yours after the PC holds their public hearing in July, which we've already warned and put in the paper. And there's a lot of steps to it. So um, dumb question, Teresa. No. Dumb. So we'll have the public hearing, and there may or may not be changes requested or suggested. Right. And the PC will have theirs, maybe changes, correct, you know, suggested or whatever. So there will be an opportunity to change or suggest changes before the final draft. Right. right. So yeah, our perhaps. hope is, and your hope will be as a select board member, that anybody who wants a change picks it up at the PC level. Okay. Right. Because if they make any changes at the planning commission level, they can deal with it. And, and um, it moves on to you. If it comes to you and somebody back. wants significant changes, mm -hmm. it kicks it back to the PC. Reward. They have to deal with it. They have another, then it comes back to you. Yeah, they're here. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, so if, any, if, if, so if anybody if has questions, a, like I've just any major changes, questions, not a change, just a question about uh, enforcement of some of the things or whatever. Yeah. That should go into the PC meeting. Yep, it can, or you could email me and and email me. And some I can of that stuff would be question. minor enough that it would because have to go back to yeah, the you no, know right. Sure. right. <laughs> yeah, but no, if you just you can email me. I'm yeah. on the planning commission, so I'm happy to answer you. And if I don't know, I'll ask. If I can't yeah. remember, I'll ask Rick. But I mm -hmm. I was the one who wrote this report, so we, well, <laughs> Rick I and I. Oh, good. Well, tell me, because Rick, <laughs> I did it. I wrote it. Rick reviewed it the pc has reviewed oh, it's amazing it stuff. It's, and and really and it. and nobody's found it so if you find one please tell me i'd love to fix it i also said the ditching bid has been reviewed and is out it is not out because it has been reviewed but i sent letters kelly's going to put them in the mail tomorrow um to all the gilead residents that this paving pro this ditching project is going to affect because some people it is going to affect lawns People have, some of their lawns are right up to the edge of the road and we're going to be ditching. Um, so I crapped a nice letter and Kelly's mailing it to all the residents affected and I'm saying, get a hold of me because we will make a ditch, we will make sure it's mowable, but I'd rather meet with you on site and deal with your concerns now um, because I don't want it to come into some big litigation and we can all work out something together. But we need to get the water off the road. It's all part of the town right away, so. It is, but there's also, I was re re looking at the statute today about that too. And But you're right, it is, but it's not cut and dry. So we wanted to make sure that if anyone has a concern about their existing, you know, about what's going to happen, that they reach out to me now and not when we've picked the contractor. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, that bid is not out yet, but it, it will go out this week. Um, the in-person grader training went well, and Forward Fest is looking for volunteers. I also, we had the questions on motorized wheelchairs and timber sales, so I gave you the statutes. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. 
And then I'm hopeful the Act 79 passes, and I did write to Dick, and actually I wrote to Dick because it was just in front of the Senate, I didn't write to Kirk, um, to say, hey, I hope you guys pass this, because it's a lot for local health inspectors. It's going to be nice if they do create a spot and, it, and the Division of Fire Safety picks yeah. it up. They're just going to have a little more bite than we're going to well, I was have. wondering, yeah, I know that the, the um, health officer training has changed drastically. Yeah. And I don't think we've gotten any kind of updates. Probably not. About that whole... Neil's hard to get a hold of. I know. Yeah, I know. So, um, but Would I you like I've... to be a deputy? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's gonna have a turn. Gene, wanna be a deputy? <laughs> deputy health officer. I was the deputy just, health officer there what, a year ago. Strikes me as <clears throat> odd that we never hear from. It's quite the process, man. I that is so involved. Gene, like, I, I, unreal. I know part of what they're dealing with is that exact thing. Yeah. In and doing inspections. It is very involved. Inspections. Yeah. On rental properties. That's mm -hmm. why it would be nice if they did what they say. If they do create spots at the state level mm -hmm. and put it into Division of Fire Safety, they're just fund them. There's just well, more exactly. They just need to fund it. I did write to Dick and say mm -hmm. you need to deal with this because it's more than a volunteer off, can do nowadays. It's I very mean, it's, true. It's, that's exactly it, what I said. The few I did took me a long time, and oh, yeah. I like to think they're pretty crafty when it comes to doing that tip work, and it <laughs> yeah. way more well, time than I wanted to invest in that. Yeah. 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 Basically, a home inspection. Yeah. Place. Just what That's if, all. if okay. you're doing your paving, you need to get it out now, or else I don't know. do it this year. Because well, I'll just let you know the town of Randolph bid their paving, and nobody bid on it. Oh, okay. So eight. So all right. And, and maybe try to be as flexible as you can with it. Well, yeah, I mean, um, they could do it next. I mean, I don't know. Like the town of Randolph let out 2,500 tons of paving and reclaiming, and but wind it done like by the first week in September, and nobody bid on it. No, I, I so would say it needs to be done. All by, the contractors are filling up. It doesn't have really to be done fast. by like October 30. Well, I think where I'm getting at is you may want to start thinking about next year. You know, whatever you need to do to get through the winter to pave it in spring or something. Yeah. Be my guess, because. The prices, everything's just going, you know, through the roof. Right well, the now, problem so. is, if I do the ditching bid, then the ditching has all my ditching, but it also replaces the culverts, and I don't want to leave those culverts yeah. as dirt all winter out and cut the pavement. Can we just replace the culverts ourselves, the town no. crew? No. Well, I'm just. No, I know. I'm just saying it, it's. No. It may be more benefit to right now hold off until the spring to do. A well, I can painting, always see what the price is if I can get anybody, and if not I don't, just price it's... and time and. Well, and, yeah, no, I mean, you I, know, it's you all can't. filling up quick, so. You want? I mean, they have to be done by October 30, right? Yeah. Or we we pay until like Thanksgiving, but. Well, I didn't know. We don't want it done that time. Either, no, that type of work, but yeah. Say you don't want. No, I'm just saying it's it's um you know the commodities going up and well we'll see schedules are full and. And the other thing too is we got to talk us. I have to make a decision about so. Sand Hill. I just really think we're going to end up spending the like. Does that grant have to be spent by June thirtieth? Which one? Of twenty twenty well, twenty twenty two, the East Bethel one. The paving grant. Yeah. I can't remember. I have to look. Because if it doesn't have to be, I was just trying to think through that. But if it doesn't have to be done by next June, maybe you could just leave your culverts out. And then, put, and, then put your, and then put it in the next, next ditching, ditching one, bed, yeah. you know? No, I could. No, it's but good I'm just one. trying to think of what's going to be yeah. no, my, my better bigger, for the town, you know? My bigger issue may be, so Randolph didn't get named bitter, so it's nice to nope. paving. Um, and that's, you know, typically what I would say is a, you know, uh, whatever, $200,000 contract that would be, you know, um, on ditching. All very right. lucrative for most people and nobody even been on it. Yeah, and what I'm wondering is about who's coming in to do work for Tatro because I do think we're going to have to spend well, $13,000 or so on Sand Hill and just... You won't even be able to plow it the way it is right now. It's gonna, you're going to rip the road apart more. And, mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do? We waited, but <clears throat> because we were hoping to get the project yeah. money and it didn't work out, we didn't get the grant, so now you're... I feel like and I, as much as I detest uh, doing something like that and then having to put good money, throw good money after bad. I don't think we're going to have a choice. So I was going to no. try to figure out who's paving for G. Yeah, to I don't know, um, see if I can piggyback it. Who did it? What, was Sunapee paving? No, much? no, not for them. Pike did some of Tatro's. Oh, was and, it Johnson? Um, Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Johnson, yeah. Yeah, maybe get a hold of them when they come <clears> in. <throat> I would assume they're doing some paving here. What? Yeah. Within a month or something? Three. Within three months? 
Yeah, I think it's gonna be. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm not gonna open yeah. up that can of worms. No, because it's July, <laughs> August. My guess is it'll be September, oh, but boy. when they're okay. meeting. Maybe it'll be August, but I don't know. I'll know right. more next week. Okay. I have a Tuesday right. of meeting. But so Johnson gaming, I'll see. Yeah, yeah, good idea. So I'm gonna go to the top, because I can't tell you till next time. I have Tuesday uh, meeting with Pedro. Boy. Not tomorrow, the following Tuesday. But although I will say there, this guy, this crew is going fast. So, so town manager report's good. Those were it. That was really at the paving bid. And I thought I heard it raining. I was like, what? Yeah, no. So that was it. Good. Slip for minutes. Yep. And it doesn't doesn't necessarily pertain to the town manager's report, but the process in the town manager's performance evaluation and, and whatnot. Which is glowing, I might add. Yeah. I'm sure that's what your first thought was, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> well, certainly. <laughs> is, um, so, I had to call Chris yeah. and ask him. So Therese is going to do her south know. evaluation oh, um, that's right. that's between that's now that's and the next board meeting. Yep. Prior. And then I will, she's going to send it to me, and then I'll give each one of you a copy of her self evaluation. And then what we'll do is we'll have a um, executive session next meeting to do her, her, um, her whole evaluation. So what I'd like to do, and I'll, I'll follow up with Dave and, and Lindley, is if you, could, if you could send back, no, that's fine. I'll give you, what we'll do is, I'll give you copies of her self evaluation. Then, when we sit in executive session, we can talk as, as yeah. a whole, yeah. go through her as a working session, go through hers, and then then I'll compile all those notes into a okay. last formal document for her to sign. Yeah. Um, so. I also think would like you to pick anyone you want, um, to, or all. I would like you to speak to the employees. I think it's important whether you choose department heads or you pick whatever sure. you choose to do, whoever I deal, well, obviously I deal with everybody, but I think that's important because you, well, I talk to you more, but for generally, uh, you could be a select board member to see me once every two weeks, whereas I deal with these people 40 plus mm -hmm. hours a week. So I think that, so for me, I think that you should do that to see what I'm doing when I'm not here. Sure. So I think it's it's uh, would yeah, be good I'll, for, I'll reach for you out to, to I'll reach out to them and yeah, you should get do some feedback. You're probably not going to be able to connect with Dave. Chances are, <coughs> but he'll be. To, uh, oh, so our next <coughs> meeting is you know, he's in Montana. Right, but then he'll be back. Well, no, then then they're so going to Rhode, uh, Rhode, Island. Rhode Island. But he might answer his phone if Chris yeah. calls him. Our yeah. next meeting yeah. in July something. What does the evaluation process include? Goal setting or any of that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, will we have previous year's goals against which we are measuring performance? Actually, you won't, uh, in a funny way, because um, I didn't have an evaluation last year. Because of how. So the evaluation process is. I came in. The evaluation time. process isn't on a calendar year schedule. So. Ideally, what? Ideally, of course, COVID messed with some of this. Everything. So, yeah. ideally, after town meet, after town meeting, we used to wait to do the the goal process until after town meeting in case we got any type of feedback from the town on a certain direction. So, um, the idea is to do goal setting like in April, May, and then we do a mid-season check-in like in August, September. Where we check in, how are you doing versus your goal, you know, and yeah, did we do three goals with you? I'm pretty sure. I'll have to look at it. was a what we didn't do it in a formal, not this way. So, we kind of chatted about it and so I wrote then, them down, but then yeah. they changed the priorities changed. But yeah. and I give you that list yeah. anyways of what we're doing ongoing. So then we check in with the goals to see how they I, I believe it was two or three goals yeah, max. It was. I can write. And they're like I smart goals, you know. Um, and then come you know, December, January, somewhere between January and March is when we sit down and do the, the regular one. Being that we were still, Formal. yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so we well. didn't, and, this, and the goals that you gave me were, or that we talked about, were not personal goals. They were like, were we going to close pay, Places Pit when we were going right. to do this? They were more that. Not that Starting I have. to get some timelines in there. Yep. That I have, and um, but and, yeah. And you'll so see with the performance evaluation itself, 
is I don't know four pages long maybe. Yeah, it is. And, and it will I have you know I different all the employees, so. different evaluation pieces in there, and then subsections of that. That's and true. and it kind of like rate one out of five. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah, and then you can yeah, comment just, on it. Just, if I were doing, yeah, I, that would be a very for me a significant piece. Yeah. You know, we said we were going to try to do this in the next year or yeah, exactly. the house yeah. coming or. Right. And you but. and I do give you guys, there was a standard list when I came that I inherited, a list of things that were out there in the ether. And I give that to you guys periodically. I'll say, oh, here's an update. Things I've taken off the list, I'll move to the bottom or where things are that we've added and changed and stuff. But so. I'll look through it. So I, I, I think we had like the manager. water. You know, the, the water saying. line was on there. Yeah, I can. Um, uh, there was places, something places. Places and was on there and something else was on I'll there. I'll see if I can find that and I'll I send it out. But I, I can find I, it. It would be, yeah. I can find it's it. It's about expectations. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we'll do it at the next meeting. Will I be meeting. too? I can't remember. I, so I've been in Bethel. I'll be four years, September 18th. I'll be in Bethel four years, but only So the two years as town manager in September. Twelve. So I was here just about two years. September, prior, so like, end of September of the math. Oh, no, uh, 19. Yeah, because I'll be four years in September. I remember I started on my oldest daughter's birthday. So yeah, I remember. You started and then we went through the whole COVID thing. and. Yeah, and I was before, worked for right. you before for two years. So, But I can find the goals that I remember. But I was just saying we never did this formal process before. <coughs> but goals no. to Chris. But again, if you. I can find them. Or actually, the last them. page on the them. review has a section that yep. to comment on your goals, and you could just comment on what. Yeah, and what it gives those you you can put in and, feedback, and yeah. I could put in for the employee can because I just did all the yeah. department heads and employees. And it very well could be you know this one is 100% done. This one we're currently working on that we want to sure. move to the next calendar year, or this one. Do it all because <laughs> this one just blew up and we haven't gotten to it. You <laughs> yeah, know? right. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Nope. Okay. So well, we'll get back. We would love the help, and there's a little bit of different places, so it'll probably something for everybody. Um, so there's your. Okay, I, think, I think that was it. Okay. Can't think of anything else. So Therese, if the twelfth, so if by the. I'll do it this week, Chris. I just no, I've been busy. Um, I just haven't had a chance. Yeah, maybe by like. By like next Wednesday, if you can give me your self evaluation, yeah. and I'll give it out to copies to everybody else, and you know, yeah. that four days should be enough time to yeah. I'll try to get it. it done this week. I just have to, I just have to frankly. And stop then, and then what we'll do is, it. and then the, probably the next meeting after that, we'll do your goal setting. Yeah. Which will be try to find that four hundred and sixty-seven dollars <laughs> yeah. stay. I guess that's one. What, what else you got, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Well, and I'll also update that list. Actually, yeah. I, do, I do keep it updated, so I can update that list to, um, I'll make a note. I do try to put that in your packet, like, quarterly or so, but I'll, it's usually, it's your list, it's like board list, update, and I'll get that to you, too, so that'll be um, helpful. I don't know, there's always a list. This is always a list on my desk. <laughs> I'll give you that one. It was always nice to, uh, I don't know, I mean, like, the select board list that we had, Yeah. it was nice going. to know what we had been talking about, but the only thing is sometimes it, be, it became like, you know, the like the old board, right, when I was getting on, it became like, it longer and longer and longer, because they never yeah. took action on anything. It was yeah. like, you know, the list just kept growing, and all of a sudden it became two pages, and then it was three pages. Yeah, it's but like, we narrowed it way down. Yeah. I mean, we've, I try to put a line through it and move it to the bottom so we can yeah. see what we've tackled. Definitely oh, want to keep it off the list. I should do it. So that graffiti? Oh, yeah. August. To, I'm telling you, just if put you the paint the out there, and I'll take Congress care of it that night. That I have gone through to get that thing. I don't painted. even need right away. Just I know. Put the you know paint what I, in roller health. You there. know what I told? I told Alan, I said, once you paint it, we're going to put a sticky note up there that says, we like landscapes, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. So if you're going to tag this after we at least make it something attractive, or I said that to him, I said, maybe we just paint I it think, a uh, frame and put a note on it. We want landscapes. At least one of the individuals that I had heard, I don't think lives in this area anymore. But, well, tagged if, it before. If the, 
you mm. think that there's bureaucracy at the state. It was nothing compared to You just to need to put the paint down there and it'll be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, no, overnight. I'm afraid it'll be worse. Well, that's what The graffiti got there without a permit. Yeah, Why can't the paint be put on without a permit? Well, until you, the railroad <laughs> catches you and then they All right, well, you. slap my hand for I'll leave painting over the graffiti. I tell me about it. Uh, yeah, oh. I'll be the one to get in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you're painting over that graffiti. Yeah. Without the permit. What are you going to do it so I can get you yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. yeah, you'll rat me out to Justin. That's right. He'll oh. come get me, throw me in the car. I'm but. In the clank. All right. Anything else come before the board tonight? Hearing none, we will motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All righty. Bye. I think Lindley was trying to say something. Yeah.